Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. Okay, we're going to start the uh, Town of Sangerville Select Board meeting um, Wednesday, the 8th, 2024. Um, we are going to say the Pledge of Allegiance first. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, um, item two is open session. We are going to try to keep this to two minutes per person. Um, would, is anyone interested in speaking? Yes. I have a question. Uh, last week, um, Wednesday night meeting, um, Mike had mentioned uh, getting a hold of an attorney to speak to the issue that we've been dealing with. And I, I neglected, I forgot, didn't even think of it, but I thought of it. I'd like to know the, the name of that attorney. Was it the town's attorney or somebody else? It is the town's attorney. Um, her name is Kristen Collins. Yeah, and I she's, looked her up today. Okay. She's not a real estate attorney. She's a municipal attorney. I looked That's her up. I correct. looked by a lot. That's correct. She no. is a municipal attorney, and that's what we need for municipal law and uh, for what for the municipality. So that's the attorney that we're using. All right. Okay. But I asked if she was a, a real estate, an expert in real estate, and I was told yes last week, and she's not real estate. She's a municipal. He stated she was an expert. Right. In and we have had other opinions from outside people who have said she is top-notch in, well, in real estate. Right. Well, just to follow up, I would, I, I would expect that there would be a letter coming from her with her opinion and the reasoning behind her opinion, and I would like to have that. We've requested any information dealing with that land, Tom and I have. Right. Well, we have not yet requested a letter, as far as I'm, I know. Um, and in light of, um, I mean, we have a meeting maybe tomorrow to speak with her, but um, I'm considering putting that on hold right now because of the, our budget issues. Um, and um, that's one of the uh, things that we're going to have to, we're, work, we're going to be working hard on tonight is the, our budget cuts that, from our um, town meetings. So uh, I think our meetings with the attorney are going to be paired way back to what we're what's hot on the front burners. So essentially you are handing this land over to this guy then? Because he's dated that property. That's your opinion. Well, stated last week that you're not going to do anything. You can just say it now, you're not going to do anything. So he, he has that lit that is dated and it's got a lot on a chain. I don't, right now, I mean, and we can discuss it, um, but um, I, we, I don't think that it would be wise for the town to spend money on that in light of the fact that we have to cut how much, how much money out of our budget? $70,000? $58,408. Yeah. Right. Right. So um, it will have to go on hold for right now. Anyone else? So you may do something in the future. You just want to get through the budget and that type of stuff first. And then put it in order of... Uh, just, that's all uh, um, priority. Yeah, I mean, I you know we will perhaps revisit it, mm -hmm. um, but right now, uh, no. Yes, Tom. Uh, in, in light of the fact that the town isn't willing to spend more money, uh, talking to a lawyer about this issue, uh, it was indicated that the. Select board was advised not to pursue the matter of access to that land. Can we get more information as to why that advisement went to the town, uh, in, written or otherwise? What what's the rationale behind not advising the town to pursue the matter? I think because it's extremely costly. I, you, you, okay, you think I, right? I, it and it was it was a verbal it was a verb, it was a conversation that. Um, uh, the chairman Mike Wark had with the attorney um, a while back, um, and um, I, these issues are typically extremely costly and 
Can we get an estimate or some just not committed? It's just an I idea, you know, the idea of cutting off that land and using that money to help fight this uh, issue is still a potential. So it would be interesting or useful, I would expect, to know what the potential cost of, of gaining access. See, it's a very dangerous precedent on the part of the town uh, to just give over to the current landowner, the, the gentleman that owns the road, to block access. There's a couple of issues happening. That, that's such a dangerous precedent in town. There's many examples where that could be done. And when people start to hear that, it, it's, it's going to be chaotic, uh, number one. Number two, you know, I want to clarify and make it public that the that in the emergency meeting, it was stated that that uh, it was, and I spoke to Dale about mm -hmm. this, and I spoke to Jeff about this. I just want to put it on public record that um, that it was it, that there was an agreement that the landowner had with Wilson New. I want to make it clear: there is no agreement. The only thing that exists with Wilson is a letter from the landowner's attorney dictating to Wilson how often he can access his land and who can access his land. And, and in fact, the landowner has said nobody else but Wilson. That is not an agreement. Wilson doesn't agree with it. It's, so I, I just want to make sure that people don't go under the impression that there's, oh, everything's okay with Wilson. Wilson knew, and I'm saying this personally, is very stressed over this matter. He's an 83-year-old exemplary citizen that has owned that land and has access. There's been a recent rumor that the, the landowner came to him and said, hey, I heard you, you run it up the road, pulling someone out. Wilson has not pulled anybody out of that road. <laughs> so there's just some bad vibes going on here. And I really think, and I'm disappointed, that the town isn't at least interested in pursuing even non-costly alternatives to working this out. If, if, to protect the landowner, I mean, to have an 83-year-old resident, again, being restricted from his land, that landowner has stripped his land, his right to do, to build a runway right up to Wilson's line. And consequently, the wind has blown over multiple trees into his field. And Wilson has to go in there and clean that up before he does any work. The gate is locked. We were told that the gate was going to be unlocked. We were told the gate might even be told last week that it, 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 be it is locked. It is there and locked. And Wilson does not have the access. So I want to make it clear there is no agreement. Uh, I thought you said there was an agreement. That I had never to said there was an agreement. Oh, okay. No, okay. That was started by Neil Gray, that rumor. That was What's that now? And I have that letter right here, which the town I gave to, this is the letter. It states in here exactly, nobody else is allowed, it, and, and he's allowed to go and do his paying, which is part of his income stream. But it's also until this guy, Kenny, says, not anymore. So there is no agreement. Never has been an agreement. He was told this in a letter. And and as far as um, Dennis Campbell, does he does we don't know whether he's got an agreement or not. He has a letter. Obviously, I had no right to ask for that. Oh, I had a right to ask, but he doesn't have to hand it over. So I don't know what that says. I have no idea. Wilson does not have a key to the spoke padlock. Um, we don't know if he can get his hay equipment in. Mr. Kenny was actually here last fall and said he's the one that actually told us in a meeting and it's on a recording that he has an agreement with the landowners in there. Well, but he can say I, what he wants. He's probably I disagree with you. Again, well, you're talking for somebody else. Well, we okay. spoke to the owner. Would you like That's to what he's letter? told us. I'll have Wilson here at the next meeting. Wilson can tell you. I understand, right. but the other thing we need to important. remember is that Wilson, that is a... That's a citizen, that's a between two citizens, that's not the town. No, we understand that, but, but it's all part of the equation though. The town should be, uh, my, my opinion, my personal opinion is the town should be more open to pursuing non-costly uh, ways to work this out <coughs> in support of, of an exemplary citizen. Eight year old man that's being abused in my, in my viewpoint uh, on this and being intimidated 
by someone that has is, a, is an attorney, has access to attorney, and obviously has the resources to, to, to just sit back, make a statement, and chuckle, and wait for the response, and knowing that people, that's, that's abuse. And that's, that's something the town ought to at least do whatever they can to, to recognize this and to support him, and look for ways that that can be worked out with the landowner. Related to that, and I know I'm probably exceeding my time, is that I spoke to both Dale and Jeff about this, that it was stated that they should follow up with Dennis because he has an interesting perspective on this, Dennis Campbell. I urge, in, order, in, in addition to that, you should speak to Wilson New, you should speak to others that have good information and a good history of the use of that land, the access to that land, and, and the realities. It would be very restrictive. In, in fact, it would be very biased to just talk to the person that's speaking up in favor of this land or restricting the land. You know, and I get that. If anybody had the choice of not having traffic by their house, by having it, they would choose not having right. it. But that's right. pretty. Uh, that's pretty. Uh, that's a pretty yeah, stupid point. Yeah, I live on Route 23, and I love to sell the traffic. <laughs> <laughs> it's yes. So. <laughs> It just uh, on the point that you made as far as the town pursuing something on behalf of one citizen, I mean, I, I'm empathetic as far as his, you know, what's going on with him. Um, and, um, I, but I think, and I think pursuing non-costly whatever we can do as far as the land that the town owns, I think is more of what we would be pursuing, honestly. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, we understand that point, but by the town, with the town protecting that 285 acres down there and protecting the town's interest, by doing that, that's going to facilitate Wilson New doing his thing. And again, that field down there he does, that part of his income stream in his retirement. And so the other thing that concerns me is the town has said they've not received a letter from the landowner's attorney, and, and there's no documents on that that have been presented. We've asked for all information related to that. It, that's, uh, that's, I think, inexcusable in the town to have the landowner's verbal words to say, agreement, that you can access it to log it. That can change at any time. Verbal means nothing. It needs to be in writing and, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. agreed upon, I would think, by the select board and input from the town on that as well. To just say, oh, I'm satisfied, and that's what I've heard. Maybe I'm interpreting it wrong, but that's what I've heard from the, from, from the past chair of this select board, that you know, we're okay with that. We're okay with just saying that we're allowed to go in and log that. Like, yeah, I, that's, that's not professional. Yeah, I would, I, I would say I, uh, something in writing is, would be imperative. Um, a verbal agreement is, as you said, and this so-called agreement that doesn't exist with Wilson also very clearly states that that can change at any time. So it's tenuous at best. Mm -hmm. And so I just want to make sure that people understand that there's no agreement. Um, and uh, Wilson's told me that personally, and I'm just stating it to you. And you could, we can talk to Wilson directly as well. I'm sure he'll reiterate that. Do you know if forestry has a key to that park? Okay. Forestry? Ooh. You know if forestry's got a key to that lock? I have no idea. No. No, I looked at the town report. I couldn't see that. I told you yesterday that that's what I was told, but I couldn't see that there actually is a forestry committee. But I believe on the website it says that. So I don't know what's going on with that. I couldn't find one yet. Toby, Toby, you're the chair of the forestry committee. Is that correct? No, I'm not the chair. You're not. In fact, I have asked the select board for the last four or five years that you really should have initiated this at the beginning of every year, but... Initiating what? Uh, the, action, the action of that committee for that year. Because we are a standing committee with, I think, fourteen or $15,000. And we have been inactive as a committee because of that. And also, uh, there's not any reason to do a harvest rate yet, but uh, yeah, we could be 
you could be going in there. And uh, like he said, there's close to 300 acres, and we have, in the past, managed it. And it's it has a management plan, which is quite well written. Where where would I find that plan? We tried to find it the other day. It should be in in the old office. In the old office. And you, you, any idea what it would be under? I have no idea. Yeah. Right, we see we see it. We were part of it, but we know where they store it. Um, yeah, I think think a lot of work into it. We we did more than just a, a total inventory of what is in there. We also did an inventory of the uh, wildlife that's there and the birds and we've had uh, the University of Maine come up and uh, do a lot of studies. Uh, I'm not sure if there's a vernal pool in there. I know there is one on Bean Hill. Right, because that's kind of what I remember. That was a complete comprehensive forestry plan. Yeah. Complete comprehensive on soils. Um, well, like he said, wildlife, the whole, the whole nine right. months, it wasn't just a tree growth plant. If I just might... Go ahead, go ahead. Uh, to me, it's important for the town to know that that is a growing asset. You have, between the two, close to 500 acres. And if you figure a half a cord per acre, this is a managed property now. And we did a lot of planting. So let's figure a half cord per acre not up on the pricing right now, but it's probably going to be uh, stumpage at around $20 a cord. That's per year. So that's around five or six thousand dollars. So um, just getting as far as your committee, I'm, I'm extremely interested in getting that up and up and and appointed or whatever we need to do as far as that would be concerned. Right. The right? last the last I remember, Toby, when we talked about it, you said where there wasn't any ready to cut, it was inactive, and that was how we were going to leave it until you felt that you needed to get going again or something. Um, as far as me, we're, whenever you guys are need to do something, you just got to tell us. Yeah, well, it's not us controlling, see, you know what I mean, that kid committee. I haven't been on that committee. My wife was on that committee last, and we didn't think it was right to have both of us on it. Uh, John was on it. John. He said he was a secretary. Yeah. Rick Calloran was on it. Rick Calloran. Okay. And, um, and myself and um, Bob, uh, Bill Rowe. Okay. Bill Rowe was on it. <laughs> This would be a natural group to, to exactly support. what I'm thinking. Yeah, That's to exactly activate this access for the public. Right, um, because if you did have um, a, someone who would be interested in 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 informing the board as far as that land, the last time you accessed it, and and perhaps we could have a conversation. Uh, not perhaps we should have a conversation with the land owner who is um, um, obstructing our, our um, access. Yeah, we used to send the forester in every year, Toby. Yeah, we had, we had uh, a forester. Mm -hmm. uh, is it in tree growth? No. It can't no, be. no, it's the it 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 town. You, you guys remember gravel in the road to get into it? Well, last time they, in the 90s. The last time they had them, they had to have yeah, yeah. we'll at the, at the land and then the road to get in and out of the road. I think so, the jogger did put in. So anytime, anytime the town does does anything to that road, it's open, the maintenance is opened back up on it. When when mm -hmm. Herb McNaughton sold it, they did some basic work on that road to provide the, the gentleman that owns Dexter Lumber, that owns it now, beyond that, it, they it did some improvements to help access over some swampy areas on that road. And Wilson, over the years, has improved that road to support his access to his field for farming purposes. So these town, town's land came from the government by the by mm -hmm. We we understand. We, we know that. Right, but they also have that's public, that's public land as long as the people of the United States. Not just the people of Senegal, but the people of the United States. They did the yeah. United States people can't keep people out. Yeah, we have the deal. Yeah, we have the deal. But it says just as soon as just as soon as the Senegal doesn't want it, it goes it goes back to people who are out of the state. Correct. Town thought they could sell it one time. No, no. 
Good. Um, uh, Debbie, I'm sorry, I just want to go on. Okay. Go ahead. Um, I think that, you know, Wilson, he does get a lot of his money from haying and stuff like that, but I believe that he also leases at some time for hunting. So that's also additional income for him that he wouldn't be able to get. Um, I think we have to be careful saying that we're not going to spend money for just one citizen. It's for all the citizens in the town of Sangerville, not just one, not just Wilson. We're all here and want to have access to that land. Um, if it was possible to to cut that property and and manage it properly and the Bean yes. Hill, um, I would like to know that that money that came from that foresting of the land be put back into this committee to tr to figure out the access and go towards lawyer fees. It needs to go back to that piece of land to find out what we're doing and not just go in the general fund. Dale, do you have any input with regard to that? No, I mean, um, I'm not saying I agree or disagree, Debbie. The oh, way the way the town works, period, any and all funds goes to the general fund. Well, I and then, that no, and then right. from then there, there, from there, right, right, what would have to happen is, is whatever that dollar value is, we add that on the warrant next year, that that X amount of money, select board recommends, that that get put into reserve, that reserve account, or... Right. That needs to be actually spent on attorney fees for a project, but right. that's kind of the circle, you know, and how it has to work. Yeah, it's worth the money. Well, not if it gives us access. Well, yeah, I know, but we should have the access anyway. Sure. Well, well, unfortunately, yeah. Yeah. Can you drop your own land? Toby, no. it sounds to me like, like uh, if the situation has changed over the last five or six years, I understand Plum Creek no longer is, is uh, owner of the lands north of us. So <clears throat> it's either a discontinued road or an abandoned road or a county road, and there's a lot of gray area. Oh. And uh, it's not just Sangamon that has been dealing with this gray area. It's many towns. We, I think we, regardless if we're going to do anything, it should be in the budget that we have. We increase the budget, you know, for legal fees uh, to look into that. That's part of what Tom and I are trying to do. As we're going in tomorrow, they found the books that we need to look up to find out how. There's like six roads I need to look up and to see how those are handled all different years. And we're going to spot to see what actually happened. Maybe nothing happened. Maybe that they never did this continue. We don't know that. It was just suggested to in these documents, and that's what we're trying to find out is exactly what happened. And, and that's an important piece: discontinued right. or abandoned. Oh, I that's know. The <laughs> in the year. Well, just I mean, because it was doesn't mean it was legal right at the time that they did. If it was public land and they didn't have any right to discontinue or to close it off, period. Well, in, in when we when we got it from the federal government is after any what well, we think. Well, I know, I know for a fact it was in '55 when we got it. The town got that right. land and it started proposing to discontinue starting in 1937 right through to 44. But there's no town well, records that we've viewed yet. Yeah. And Jeff has been supporting us to research. So the government owned it before that. Was it legal to discontinue it on them? Well, if they did, that's legal. Question, so there's yeah. another whole question. Right, yeah. So and it always has had access. And most of the time when things go to Supreme Court, it's like, so it has a lot to do with the history mm -hmm. and how the use exactly. was and the use of that land by the public. And the public always had the right to go down in there and hunt it. Hunt for mushrooms, <coughs> pick raspberries, whatever they wanted to do. You can't post that land and keep people off of it. Well, the town can't. Yeah, years ago there was a farm down there. Yeah, the there were yeah. several farms in there. As of right now, too, if something happens down there, the fire department has no access. Right. Mm -hmm. If there's a forest a fire down there, we're going to lose all the trees. I have no key to it. I can't get it. Does the town have a key to it? And the forest department would have it? I mean, no. I can get in there, but he isn't going to like it. Yeah. You, got, you guys been in there and seen it? I uh, No, I've never been in there. I would like to go in and yeah. see it. I mean, the 
Last time, I, I used to go on that property all the time. On my, yeah. on oh, you've my seen property the gate? to get into my land. I remember that. When I was in the I, I remember that. Yeah. That's okay. why I'm saying. That's and we, that's and we turned the gate into a pretzel. <laughs> and then we, the, the town okayed it. We did it as a donation to the town, and they okayed it, except our donation. I remember that. And yeah. that Mike... And act, any legal repercussions for it? Mike Wark has um, re referenced exactly your situation every single time we've discussed this um, exact issue. Um, so it's... Um, uh, I, 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 it's a worthy cause. I mean, the land is, I, you know, I, I value that, and I, I'm, I'm really happy that, that we have now the group that is responsible for the conservation of it and the management of it. And if, if you can gather the troops and also, you know, get a chairman and, and everything, and then and we'll, we'll, we'll start a conversation with the landowner, um, uh, Mr. Kenny. Um, Start there um, because you have been managing it. You've been in it year in, year out, and um, you need to continue to manage it. So, yes. I'm just curious. Mr. There isn't any proposal before you regarding that land from the landowner. Proposals. There's yes. There's been a rumor going around that you're about to sign. Oh. No, he when he first actually I did all the research. Um, oh. Uh, at least three or four years ago, and I have all of that. I don't have it right at my, but anyway, when he first started developing or buying the land, he asked if he could buy that land. And, um, and we looked into it and realized the government, you know, the US government gave it to us and that in fact we could never sell it. And if we did want to sell it, we have to give it back to the US government. So, um, and so we said no. And that was the end of it. We we have we the only thing that was brought up was we thought that Mr. Kenny was going to give us an agreement, which we don't have in hand. Oh, As of right. We need a legal easement. Yeah. Sure. Correct. Yeah. Correct. So and, and, and to find out, well, we actually need to somewhat agree <laughs> with all abutting landowners to that road. For upkeep and uh, you know, improvements, right? Because it, you go up and then you take a, a right, correct? And then it, then you're with um, Dennis Campbell. You're you're sharing the road at that point, or I'm not sure yeah. who's yeah. on yeah. the. Yeah, you got it right. Yeah, Katie yeah. and Campbell own the land at the point. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. okay. Right. Yeah. I just want to say that in one of the last um, selectman meetings, I think Dale was talking about. And correct me if I'm wrong. Um, talking with Dennis Campbell, and he's got so much history and all this stuff. Um, his family didn't own that land. His wife's his, family. Yes, I, I know that. So yeah. he doesn't have this long generational, you know, I, I personally have four or five generations here in Sangerville, so does Bruce. Um, Bruce's father actually owned a long time. He owned one of the lots that, because so, it, there's a government, quote, government land, and behind that, there's another 120 acre piece that was taken for taxes that Lance Burgess was instrumental in doing. Well, my father actually owned that at one point in time. So my father used to own about 700 acres down there. So I've got history in it going right back to when I was a kid. Okay. So I, I really don't want to go by what Dennis Campbell okay. has to say. I want to make sure that anything that we do use and that comes in front of any of, of us has been something that has been recorded through the courts and that type of thing. Um, because what he's saying is just basically hearsay. Well, it's helpful to have a historian, and, 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 I, and I, as far as saying, you know, 1937, okay, now we know we can go look, go look up, you know, we know where we can start looking. So historical knowledge has value, um, I think. Um, again, I agree with you. Yeah. In I the end, don't want it to become fact. Right. No, that's that's, that's not even that's not what I meant either, Deb. Yeah. It's more of it's yeah. great that everybody sits here and we all talk, but nobody's writing it down. And that's why to get his perspective, get that written down. Then you do have timestamps, and it comes back, and it's easier for him to document or look for that you documentation. Is correct. Right. Because a lot of times, what ends up or what we've dealt with in the past is you don't. You can't always find that documentation. So you do end up going to not one person, but multiple people right. that around encompass that thing and take everybody's 
okay, I think it was this, I think it was that, and try to piece it all back together. And I think Wilson may be a good person to sit down and yep. talk to as well. He probably mm -hmm. has yeah. much more knowledge. He's he owned that land for 60 plus years. Wilson. Wilson. Yeah. I would say that he must be talked to if he's going to talk to mm -hmm. anybody. It's yeah, by I agree. But this is the first year the gate's been locked, correct? Yes. Yeah. 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 Right. This is the first year that the gate yeah, the period gate. that was just put up. And we got a nice mailbox in the cemetery. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. On our side. Yeah. A mailbox yeah. for the cemetery? <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't own the cemetery. No. Well, like, no. It feels like he owns everything. Does the town own the mailbox? Yes. Yes. Because it's a remote. You should remove it. Let me just go back on this side. Yep. I yes, Toby. I think you can find that uh, comprehensive forestry plan. There's a lot of history, and you have turning points, you have the, the surveying uh, distances and angles. Well, it'll say comprehensive forest, forestry plan on the manual. Jesus, it should. I mean, should it's, it's, it's in a three ring notebook that's. I'll go on a hunt and see if I can find it. Pretty, we'll see if we can yeah. find it. I have not ever, I've never seen the one in the town office. Um, my wife and I have collected a lot and uh, have somewhat our own. If I find it, can I get a hold of you somehow? I'll take your number down, show you the number, and we'll give you a call. And yep, I'll go through it. I'd appreciate that. Who did the last one? Sam Brown? I was going to say, would anybody else have Sam a copy Brown. of it? Sam Brown did the last one, right? Well, I told you. Well, he he was our forester, but he uh, who wrote the comprehensive plan? I think it was Mike Whalen. You remember him? Yeah, yeah. Mike, Mike wrote it for us. Mike did a lot of work on it, and the state forestry department did a lot of work on it. Gordon, Gordon Moore. Gordon Moore, and uh, yeah. Does it take formal action to resurrect this forestry committee and, and um, ask them to, pers to to take this on as a topic of research and discussion? I mean, uh, only that we would reappoint them or, you know, they could gather they, and, and tell us who's who and, and then we would reappoint them and get them up and running. And I, I think we should do that as soon as possible. Yeah, we used to have, at the beginning of all town meetings, we used to have a sign-in sheet. Like, you know, the budget wanted. committee from exactly. all sorts of things. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, then right afterwards, there was a time when the chairperson was sworn in. It was a standing committee, and I believe they, uh, the uh, bylaws of the select board has to sign in. Like We're chairman. doing that tonight <laughs> with, <laughs> with other things. Like the, uh, the chairman of the, the, the planning Yes, yes, yes. No, that typically that happens right after the annual meeting. So um, I, I just, I, I, I don't know why your committee fell off the radar. Um, um, Bill was our last, Bill was our last president. Bill So that's a while ago. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So if you would have been drawing in that. The Bean Hill lot is, is another special lot to me. It's, it's, we did a lot of work up there, and uh, that one you don't need a key to. <laughs> 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 Not yet, anyway. Yeah. 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 Give it time. We <laughs> got a government uh, grant on that one. We'll find all those out of the trees up in there. That's right. Thank you. It was it was uh, the canopy tree growth. It was the canopy tree program. Mm -hmm. My wife. Got a, got a uh, I think it was something like Project Canopy. Project Canopy, and that's yeah. where the money came from to do the, to the forestry plan. No, no, we put some maples all, all along the um, Abbey Bowler Law up there. No. We gave that That's what happens when the <laughs> committee's not active, you forget. But we did, tra we we did transplant them. those. Did you? Yes. Do you remember that, Dale? We transplanted those trees. You don't remember that? No, I remember oh, we were supposed to. We, no, what? It's still up there. They I don't are? think it got moved. I remember. Uh, anyway. 
No, I know, but I remember, and I know. We talked about moving them. I don't think anybody. Appeared. No, but I, it's, I thought maybe it was you, Toby, that you were saying that you were putting the shovels down so it would create its own I ball. Did. I root pruned all the way yeah, around, yeah, yeah. but there was so much back and forth with Abby Fowler. I said, well, geez, maybe, you know, maybe <laughs> oh, the man. town it will eventually have that open space, which was my dream from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'd, I'd just like to say, in just a few minutes of people talking and listening and going back and forth, look, look how much you learn. In just a few minutes of just people calmly talking and you found out so much, you got people who want to volunteer to do stuff. Uh, I think it's a great thing. I was going to say something very similar. Thank you, but thank you, Jody. This is the most constructive conversation we've had yet, 100%. so I appreciate yes. your leadership 100%. allowing this. <laughs> thank you, Jody. Oh. <laughs> Well, I am extremely interested in that piece of land. Um, I, I'm very concerned about our budget. So that's where, and you know, I, it, and again, I'm just one person on this board. There's so much on them lots with very little budget at all. Didn't well, no, but at all? I'm talking about attorney fees. Well, right? yeah. right. You said Gabriel was going to take a year or two to get, to get the townspeople to go along with increasing the budget. Expressly for um, right. specific duties to take care of it. Yes. He's a he's an attorney, from what I understand, in Florida. Yes. Correct. He can't practice in Maine. Unless he passes a bar up he here. He can't pass a bar before he can do that. Right, so exactly. He's, he's hired a lawyer to pay or he's 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 he can't do it. So Everybody's got a lawyer. Yeah. Everybody's yeah. got one. Yeah. He does. Um, he does have an attorney in, in Bangor, Paul. He does have an attorney in Bangor. Yes. I don't know who that it is. I do. I've oh, okay. I've spoken okay. personally with him. It was a good meeting, but obviously I didn't get anywhere with him. Right. I asked him, I went in specifically to get the letter that he sent to the town. And of course he wouldn't. Intimidation. You know, yeah, yeah. I mean, we don't have a letter. We do not have a letter. I'm going to make sure that, that uh, Jeff has a copy of Wilson's notes. Because like, like I said, this whole agreement is, and I'll just read it again, he can revoke, he will revoke it whenever he feels like it. I think so, I got that letter. And yeah, I'll get you a copy of it tomorrow. Yeah. And so I've stated that I think it's important that the town does have formal communication. Absolutely, I agree with you 100%. I, I, I absolutely 100%. <laughs> That's the only, yeah. I agree. I, I um, think I, I like what the town manager just said, that because we're calm and thinking uh, to get a lot accomplished, and I think for the next year or two we should continue that and not upset this gentleman that has put the gate up and walked. He may very well be in his legal right, but if we go about it right and approach him decently, that we do have acreage back there, we would like to harvest it. There's, it's in the memorandum of the forestry uh, plan that uh, we have an understanding that it is open for hunting and for <coughs> oh, interesting. to walk around. I'm not sure about uh, snow travelers or four wheelers. And, uh, because of we plant we planted so many exotic mm. trees mm. up in those places, but yeah, we we had it. That, that's our memorandum of understanding is to keep it open so that it has public use. Uh, I just for the record, I had I was witness to a conversation between the, Wilson and the landowner, and he stated he has no interest in meeting. Wilson asked. If we could meet with him and meet some of my friends, <laughs> and he said I have no interest. Oh, if they want access, they can buy my land. Oh, that's a shame. That's that's <laughs> easily enough done. As far as my suggestion and what I was advised about a long time ago, because I've spoken yes. with an attorney about that, and I've got another one that I have a name who was an expert, a true expert in, in this field, and then just and we talked about it in the domain. Just take the road back. Be done with it. And, but, and that does not mean that we have to 
to then maintain this beautiful road to go in there. We don't have to do anything to maintain it. Just yeah, take back so the public access. That's right. Yeah, that's exactly. Just, and obviously it's going to cost something, but it's not going to be terribly expensive as compared to the amount of wood that can be cut off that, just selectively cutting. That would more than pay for that and then have money left over. And so I think that's the only viable option. All this discussion and all that. And, just, and apparently, from what I was advised, he cannot fight the town taking that because it's for public purposes, public use. And he can't fight the taking. What he can fight and I've done the calculations that's going to be between, depending on how wide the road is, between two and four acres of land. And you got to reimburse him. You pay for that back today. Yeah. Yeah. Right, exactly. And I know, what he, I know what he paid for the land, and I'll be per acre. And so that eminent domain is a viable option, and that just solves all problems in his, in his permanent fix. I also have the original letter from him that what he was offering the town for that land acreage wise. Um, because uh, there's boggy areas, so we, and I don't have those numbers in, committed to my head. And I, but anyway, <coughs> it's on my computer. Um, um, no, but I have that letter, so I know what he valued our land at. Mm -hmm. oh. no. So and he's not the first guy that wanted to buy it. <laughs> <laughs> Is that right? I don't. I don't know that historically. Yeah, right. That's why we, we put up. Remember Toby? We they, they thought the select was going to sell it because it was a group that wanted to buy it, and. Because we went, we went around and got a petition signed, and we hired a lawyer who worked pro bono. We didn't charge it for a committee anything. And um, we and said, well, you know, the town manager should write a letter to the Susan Collins's office, and they explained how that how that deed works, and it and it would literally take an act of Congress to change that. Right. And right. That, and within well, that act, there was grand purchase from multiple states, so it's, it's not going to happen. No, we and cannot we, sell we it. We don't want it. It goes back to right. the United States. Right. Exactly. We, so, we, we know that so we cannot. So then they cannot. realized all that, but we still had a petition to the, the, all kinds of signatures on it that people did know. They wanted to keep that land. They did not want to sell it. It went through town meeting. We voted on it. Even though we knew that we couldn't because it was already on the warrant, it had to be voted on. And it was unanimous that people wanted to keep it. Mm -hmm. Okay. I had a question for Toby. Why would they want to keep something they couldn't have that? The, that land was gifted to us by USDA. Is that what I understood? Department of Agriculture. Mm -hmm. And Wilson's land is also probably registered with USDA, like my farm is. Is there any place to explore help with them for this issue? I'm not sure. Like with like with my farmland, if I. If, they send me a newsletter each year, and these things, these topics are discussed in it, and access is one of those things that's yeah, always discussed. They won't, they, won't, they won't give you money. You can't be part of farm programs for entry or agriculture if you can't have access. Mm. If there's no access, and that's, well, there isn't a clear deed to it. That's why I'm asking this question. The, no, the, no, quest, the question is, if, if, if Wilson is indeed registered with USDA, um, on his farm, like mine is, is there help available to get him access or to get access to the land that they gifted us? Very well, might be. It's a good place to look into. It's a good place. Well, that's what Jeff did already. The USDA said that it's for harvesting, and that's not for everybody's access. Did you talk to somebody in Dover? Or did you talk to somebody? Oh, the guy I called was a forester. He's, he's got the letter to him. And, uh, the way he perceives it or receives it, a perception reception, that there's always a difference between the two. He he received it as it's for public use. In other words, you could enter the land, cut the wood, use it for something in town. That's how he interpreted it. Oh. Forest is a lot more than right. trees. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. No. No. Every, everybody interprets <laughs> stuff different. But what's what's the yeah. actual? Yes. Uh, yeah. I think that's this last Last week, I mentioned Tom knows Susan Collins' husband, who's also no, her chief, yeah. chief of staff, and he's contacted him. He wants to do a follow-up, but part of what they are, keep asking is about these discontinued roads. And that's what we're trying to, before he makes more contact, we got to get that piece of the, and that's the last piece of the puzzle that we need for this research. And because well, he well, wants to follow up, but... Jeff, yeah, that's a good question. That's exactly, that's a good one to, 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 to couple that with. Yeah. Mm -hmm.
Yeah, I mean, I, it, you know, as far as figuring out what the status of that road is, that is... Right. And we're going to stop that tomorrow. Okay. Yeah, All right. They've gotten the books up for us, and it's going to slog, but we're going to do it. And, yeah. Good. Yeah. Does anybody know Neil Hamill that used to work at Hayes? Uh, I, I think he retired, but he, did. he, he retired. used to yeah. be, like, right when we worked in real estate, he was the D guru. He could find, like, anything. So I didn't know if he may be a source if we get stuck on something. I think he's retired, but... Um, That's who I had on the ground. Yeah, he's just, he can find anything. Yeah, what's the name of this road? Oh, that's a good question. What is the name of the road? Okay, not Hill Road. Stop. But right, Gilman Corner, corners, it goes all the way to East Sangle. East Sangle Grand. But I mean, where it turns it off after it goes and takes a right. Yep, that was once on called the county, county road. Property. Yep, county it was road. called the county road. Then you go down there and it takes a left. That's where the town land is. That was called Reardon Road. Yeah. But, yeah, but it's off. And back in the day. You're on right in through the cemetery. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's what road's on. Exactly. That's East when the Sangle current day is. So I'll say we'll see that. The current day is to make on field. Find out come back. Which they have on a tax map. Right, but I, I think we're going to go right. Um, yeah, that was going to be called the county. Yeah, I, I and that. So you can look up, I can go look up in the registry. No, I've not done all that. You know? You've done all that? Yeah. 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 And the last piece of the puzzle is, now that I know all the roads, the last piece is to find out if, in fact, they were discontinued. And if so, was there any particular provisos on that? Or, or whatever. That, that's what we need to find out. Because that's what everybody keeps asking us. Okay, so the road was laid out from the covered bridge to the avenue. Straight shot right down through there. Right. Now, I, I was going up and not the, the down by the down by the Grand Child, and not Hill Road, right. or right straight through yeah. there. Yeah, right. South right. Sangamon Grange to the. Yep. You speak all Hill Road yeah. and all kinds of different things. Yeah. The, yeah. the, 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 the avenue was the Silver Mills Road today. The avenue was a county road. It's Union Street. So, so I think it, um, if if your group will, if the uh, forestry uh, committee will re regroup and um, and and we'll get everybody reappointed, I think is a, a, a very important step so that you can start. Um, Working toward um, having a conversation, or um, you know, I from what Tom said, um, the landowner isn't interested in having a conversation. But um, I think with a committee that is the forestry management group for that for that land, Sangerville's uh, forestry management committee, um, if if he's not willing to have a conversation with you, then we will. Um, you know, we, we'll see what our budget is. Um, I'm, I'm well, I would just have the committee can meet. They can meet with us, pass along information, or pass it through the town manager. The town manager can work with them. Okay. Instead of having multiple people from the committees try to get a hold of them. Right. Have okay. it all funneled through the town manager. Okay. Um, well, another issue, but with a small town like Sangerville, is there a conflict of interest with a man and a wife sitting on a committee or working within a committee? You said, Cindy, oh. Cindy and Toby felt like they should be on the no. same committee. It, I, I think it's that was us. <laughs> just, just you guys. Yeah. I mean, a committee is really it's an advisory role. That's right. all it is. You guys so have all the no, power. All that's we do right. is make right. advice to you. We don't exactly. spend any money. Everything goes through you. Yeah. Exactly. It always exactly. worked that way. That's exactly right. So there, there is no conflict as far as, no. Um, she was a great secretary. <laughs> I think we wore ourselves out of our <laughs> All right, let's move on. Is there anyone else here for any other reason? If not, we can continue on. Uh, so, uh, item, thank you very, very much. John, you're in the front. Thank yep. you. Okay. <laughs> um, so item three, we're going to sign the minutes of the board meeting May 2nd, 2024. And that date is actually wrong. Who heard me? Who did? Who? I mean, you have to. Okay, okay, so you and I have to. okay, so I'll make a motion to approve those minutes. You second. Dale. Yeah, exactly. Jody. I'm sure Dennis does. 
Uh, okay, the review of the tr uh, item four. Okay. Uh, item four, review of the <coughs> treasurer warrants. Uh, a, payroll, no payroll. We did not, I did not do payroll because of the budget cuts. Um, in part of the general government, that included Sam's and my increases in pay, hourly rate. So I wanted to come here first and get the board so state for the budget before I did payroll. Okay. All right. Um, and that's how real it is. I know. So yeah, we're gonna be short. There's no question. So we gotta figure out what we're not, what we are, and aren't gonna be able to do here pretty quick. Right. And that's why you know, getting back to the, yep. you know, even these conversations, just to inform ourselves as far as anything, we need to just rein in a, a that. We're, we're still digging. Okay. So B, um, so no payroll, um, B, accounts payable number 29. Go ahead. Motion approved. Would you second. like to? Okay. Um, we've had first and second, and I'll, we'll all vote. No three. In agreement. Okay, item six, old business, A, town meeting. <laughs> Are we just at I this think point? we would just where do we stand with the budget? Okay. Um, just kind of discuss what took place in town meeting. Where do we go from here? Okay. Type. Okay. Do wanna, Discussion. Do we want to blow through the rest of this? Sure. And then and we then can go back, back because sure. we're going to be there a while. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. And that way. I mean. Okay. We'll we'll pass over item six. We'll return to that item seven. New business A. Competitive bidding discussion. This is a, a policy on competitive bidding. Um, it sets the maximum $10,000 uh, before you go out to bid. For the cost of everything today, you get a culvert, so I go on the road, you can put cement culvert, you're going to be over $10,000. I'd, I'd like to see that maybe up to around fifteen, dollars and that would cover most anything we're going to run into. You know, like Scott Reynolds the other day, when you guys had the flood back in the beginning of the year, we ran up over 15000 just like that. Mm -hmm. and, you can't wait to have your roads fixed and stuff. And, and yeah, there's a provision in here. You can just go and do it. I think 15 would be more of a reasonable number. So bring it up to today's right. prices Correct. and what, what it costs to go out the door. So, um, Dale, did you have you, I have not read this policy. I really thought we changed the work. Right. So, but I look online. This is it right here. This is the only one. This is the only copy that's online, but I really thought we worked on this a few years ago. Well, I thought, I thought we, we cleaned it up, and I thought the 10 <laughs> went to 15 because of the way everything cost, and I also thought we cleaned up some other language in it. So do we want to table this and all, all um, because I have not read this, and, um, and on a night that we don't have as many things going on, um, we could work on it. Well, how about, I mean, or what about... Do you want to work on it? Number one, it's just a policy. It's okay, yep. It's, yep. Our, it's yep. our rules. Yep. Mm -hmm. And we can vote and we can We can vote change again. this every meeting from yep. now until forever. Yep. Your biggest concern right now is that $10,000 number. You want that to go to fifteen? Yep. That. So, I mean, we can okay. that. Okay, why don't we do that? That's an easy one. We can make that change tonight. That and gives then we him can... what he needs to do. And then we can work on this. Separately, come back next time and clean it up. Get right. Get everybody's opinions of what we think or whatever. I mean, it's not no there wants to be right. I just think it gives us a little bit of a margin there. Right. Right. And uh, if Michelle, you'll just keep it sort of on our um, agenda, oh, yeah. Yeah. so that you know, and we'll revisit it. Um, so I'll make a motion that um, we're going to increase um, the dollar amount to from ten thousand to fifteen thousand for um, our policy on competitive bidding. So up to fifteen thousand dollars. It's not necessary to get a competitive bid. Long and short of it. Second. Okay. All in favor? Three. Are in favor. Do you favor. want me to email you this after I change the price so you can work on it for the next meeting? I mean, I have mine. You, you, we all have copies. So. Do you, okay, so do you want an email? Do you have it in a, in a Word document? I do. Yeah, that would be great. Okay. Oh, okay, because then we then can... Then we can clean it up as we're, if we're doing stuff. Okay. 
The only thing, Jeff, just not the past history, we've done this many different ways. Uh, number one, we call this competitive bidding. There's nothing as far as state statute that says the town has to come. It's not like a federal bid. You don't have to, at the town level, you don't have to come up with this engineered document, I guess I want to say, like a lot of people in the past have always thought we have to do. Um, it can be legitimately, he calls a contractor on the phone, hey, this is what we're going to do, what's your price? It can be a verbal quote, doesn't have to be a written quote. Um, usually for a bigger job, we do get into that kind of thing. Um, and then in the past, a couple of things, and we've stumbled on this amongst ourselves, um, there's different ways to look at it because some towns go by state rate as far as that's the maximum we're going to be allowable to pay. Um, we tried that for a little while and one thing that we kind of noticed was the state rate's not, just because you're going to pay at that state rate, I might be able to pay somebody more qualified that may want a little bit more an hour, but they get more work done mm -hmm. for that mm -hmm. same amount of money. So. It's really, it's the, I don't know, I don't know the right answer. I'm just trying to let you know things in the past that we've tried to struggle with. Right, and we've, we, right, we've, we've Whether tried Whether it's right a, or wrong, a, I don't know. But. A bunch of different models yeah. and, and um, kind of found what works the best. And also publishing, we don't typically publish it in the paper. Is that right? Well, it depends on what it is. I mean, like, yeah. Alan goes out, Haven, right. we send something out. Yeah. yeah. We think the townspeople, if I can just interject with my opinion that I saw was that we just want to make sure that everybody had an opportunity to put bids, that it's not, it's very impartial, that somebody doesn't have a friend and, or becomes uh, yeah. friends with someone and they're the ones who are just getting all the work all the time kind of thing, because there's other contractors in our town and that type of thing, so Absolutely, we just want yeah. to make sure mm -hmm. it was fair. Yeah, that's a valid point. Um, and, and one other thing Dale didn't mention is we don't, we don't, as a rule, or, or it, go with the lowest bidder either. Well, it's something to look at, but it's not Correct. a rule you have to go to the lowest bidder. Right, exactly. There was no, right. I mean, we try to be there, but sure, we're not gonna, you're not going to save a middle, a dollar, no one is going to cost you 20. Yeah, right, right exactly. No. I no mean, different than you would at home. It's sort of a, right. Okay, so, <laughs> we, uh, so we've taken care of that, and we'll, we'll work on it. As far as a, uh, maybe we can find that other one, Dale. Yeah. All right, next. Let's see. Um, we are at B, Matt Blockler. Yeah, um, I'm here just because I talked to Jeff Libby about the money that was awarded through the petition for the air packs. He did not have an answer for me as far as when that's available and. Um, when we can basically order those. I have a 60 day lead time. Nothing has to be paid until they get here, but I'm kind of trying to figure out what the time frame is so that I can get that stuff on its way. He said that that was something because it's general fund money that isn't in his realm. Well, and, and, um, as far as this petition, is concerned. Um, the money that was voted on is is up to the selectmen to spend. Um, is the is how it works. Um, the petition tells us what the town, the temperature of the town, right? Um, but in the, in the end, it's it's up to the selectmen to say, um, are we going to spend this money on the air packs? Um, and at this time, and, and we can discuss this, um, but at this time, as far as your air packs are, are, are working and they're current and they're, um, they're so I would say and, uh, that, that that money is, um, you know, a, like a, a security blanket, um, that it's there if all of a sudden... You don't have enough air packs. The money is there to order an air pack, and and you guys can weigh in if you you know if you want. Um, but um, it's not necessarily that you get to go out and order four air packs. Um, that's that's what the people voted on. Right, 
It is what the people voted on, that's correct. Um, but it the it is up to the selectmen to spend the money. And 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 uh, so that's I guess I'm not exactly sure how that works. Um, the the town's people voted that through. Is that the same that's gonna happen with the town hall committee? Or is that just gonna be you guys don't get that either? Well, certainly um, we've, we're going to start working on the proper steps uh, to, but, but the, the, the truth of it is, is that, and actually, you know what, Jerry Peters said it perfectly, way better than I can say it, but he verbalized it, and that's when I said, you're absolutely 100% correct, if all of you remember that we're at the meeting, at the annual town meeting. When he, this thing keeps squeaking, when he um, verbalized um, that it is, in fact, up to the selectmen to spend the money, to make the decision to spend the money, and um, so that, and that he said, hopefully, we'll, we'll work and, and, and figure out what's going to work best for the town as far as, and that's talking about the building. But, but he was correct, and once he said that, I said, yes, I, I, I agree with you, and that's the way it is. Does anybody else want to weigh in on that? My opinion of what I would like to see happen is before the petition and what's been happening with the fire department, there was conversations between you and Patrick, and I think between you and Jeff Sands, about getting the department, what's the right head count, what's the right amount of people, how many air packs do we truly need, and what's the, what's the right cycle to make this happen. So right now, between the reserve account and this 40 grand, that's $60,000 that's available to spend if we need it. My problem that I have with this, if we spend $40,000 today on air packs that we I don't feel that we need because you are in compliant, they are inspected, they are safe. All we're doing is we're cycling the town into another $40,000 cycle down the road. So I think, the, and this again is my opinion, number one, if we hold the money, work, you work with Jeff, continue like we was, what's the right number, how many we have, how do we either A, still try to get grants, and or what's a good cycle to I'm stay I'm the only on. one in town writing grants. I'm the only one that just got one today. <laughs> then work with Jeff, as I just stated. But why don't you work with him a little bit and work with the fire department a little bit as the voice of the people saying that we don't want them to go into a burning building and all of a sudden we find out their air packs don't work. So maybe instead of getting four, let them go ahead and get two. But that's why we work out. with the town manager to make these things Right now, all of our air packs are fully in compliance. They're right fully now, but only for another, what, year or two? No, that's year not no, That's not true. We don't know. We don't know. The bottles for them could last forever, for all we know. Next year, 2260. I'd like to see a little more. I'd like to see a little more give and take, I guess. Well, maybe and it's not even, it's, it's, maybe it's. Maybe he can buy two and then yeah. get the head counts, and, and then that way we all know that yeah. our firemen are safe. But, the, the, but that's the I, point. Yeah, I really do want to correct you uh, there and, and caution you there, please. Honestly. But we're no, getting honestly. used air packs, and I understand, and that was a wonderful thing. Like, it was a, a wonderful thing, but why not start with but letting I, him get one now or two now, because it is the voice of the people saying we want them to have their air packs, and, and at least compromise. I'm just trying to see the board and to have a little give and take back and forth. Absolutely. Um, we have very concerning budget issues. Yes, I get that. And so that money is now safeguarded for the fire department. But they're not allowed to use it. Correct. That, that's, I, Jeff, you can weigh in. That's good. Okay. Well, I, I don't appreciate... I'm I don't just a big first responder. It would be like me sending him out when he's on the sheriff's department and saying, well, your best, your best is probably good maybe for another six months or so, so wear that. Um, when we think that we're getting close, that it might not stop a bullet and kill you, then we'll go ahead and we'll get you a new one. No, so that's not how this works. Like, these are, these are annually tested, the monthly inspected. It's no different. I mean, 
Buy a brand new one tomorrow, it can fail. It doesn't change anything. So uh, I just look at it as the voice of people. I guess I'm going with the temperature of the people that we need to start letting them get, even if it's one, even if it, like, we've got to start the process of being able to go ahead and, and get these so that we can. And that's what we're that's, that's my opinion on it. I, I think I agree with Deborah on the fact that the townspeople of Sangerville walked away from that meeting um, feeling like this was going to happen. And I'm concerned that if it doesn't, the people are going to go, what's up? Um, and rightfully so. I mean, they, they voted on it. They feel like they left that meeting funding them for this purpose. I would be concerned with that. So maybe if we could even just do one. Let him get started with one. So at We're least not the people know the staff and fire department if these guys are going to feel like they are not supported. Right. They are not going to be here. And we want more volunteers. We want to build up our fire departments. We want well, I, we, we, I mean, we, it, it's not unlimited. We, we, we need a limited, I mean, yes. and yes. Matt. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, no, I, I agree. I agree. It, we, we can't, um, um, but the other thing to understand is that with these petitions, these um, um, many times these petitions have to do with an ordinance passing and things like that. And the voice of the people say, "Yes, we want to sell marijuana." And you know, the, back when we had that, and that was a people's petition. Mm -hmm. And that's that is listening to the voice of the people and saying, "Okay, the people want to opt out of that. We don't want that in this town." When it comes to people's petitions spending the town's money, that's why it, even though the town has said to us, we want you to spend it that way, it's our decision to, to make an informed decision. Um, because if not, I mean, think about it. Next year, what petition? You get a group of people that want to want to. You know, and I don't want to sound flippant, but you know, build a, you know, a, a community pool or whatever, and you get enough people and say, yeah, we want to do it. And we're going to spend X amount of dollars. Um, so it's it's a little different when the petition has a dollar amount attached to it, um, and um, um, so it's important to to be aware that we're we're considering it. And and it, it, that money, yes, um, that money is there. And and tomorrow, if four packs fail, then and Matt needs the money, then absolutely. But then it takes sixty days to get it. Right. So that sets you back even further. So it'd be nice to have at least one coming to show that that we, the selectmen, are listening to the voice of the people. We understand, and, and it's not a community pool. You know, this is people's lives that we have and on I, here. So it's a little different. No. Um, respectfully, I'm, I'm not trying yeah, to argue well, and I, I, um, but I think that it would be a big step to be able to, and I'm not trying to speak for you either, Matt, but to be able to say, okay, you know, because we do have budget issues and stuff, but we do still appreciate the voice of the people, our fire department, let's go ahead and just get one coming in, and then we can start to figure out how many do we really need. Uh, you know, how many people show up at the fire, how many do we really need, we may not need 11, maybe we only need... I don't think we need um, any at the moment. Um, we were told at the annual meeting that it, we don't need them right now. So do you do you wait until your car is ready to break down before you start considering? I mean, I, I see that you typically <laughs> have a fairly new car. Um, no. Most, not everybody typically waits until their car is going to leave them on the side of the road to look into, this is, it's called the end of life for equipment. It's extremely vital. Jeff can attest to it with a fire department. It's not it's not pencils for the school. It's Correct. not Correct. books. It's not reams of paper. It's life saving equipment. I think another thing the the recommended end of life for those is between fifteen and twenty years. They're twenty one to set twenty seven years old. So the smart plan is to start, which is just what this petition was. It wasn't, let's buy all brand new ones. It was, let's start, because in five years down the road, you could have 
five that either aren't working anymore or certain regulations could change and it's going to force your hand to have to buy them all at once. And why would you want to do that? Not only for the fact that you're going to, in 15 years, have to buy them all at once again, but also, why wouldn't you try to span that out? Right. These 2216 bottles that we have, the pack may be okay, but the 2216 bottles are not going to be available. So when they're expired and no longer able to be used anymore, they have a 15-year life, and there we have a few of them that are coming up in the next year or two. When you can't buy one, the pack can be great, but if you can't put a bottle on it, it's, it's I understand that, and that's when you say, okay, time to order those new new air packs. Um, I'm just asking for a plan. Can you I want you to work with bottles? Jeff. Get a plan. What's that? Can you give me a list of the bottles when they're expired? Yeah, I, you should have one right now. But. And just to let you know, I'm not saying that way, I'm trying to say that one's not going to help it. It, no, but it's, it's, it's showing health. content. Be it's better showing off. a good be better off in two of content. Buy two, you can put two in the front of the truck. I'm happy with two, but I'm also happy with one. It shows the intent yeah. of the board I know what you're saying. that now things have changed a little bit, that we are going to now be a cohesive town, and we're going to start working together and caring about each other and making sure that people are safe and taken yeah. care of. So I, I just like the intent of, okay, let's get one coming right now. And that way, it's showing the intent that yes, we are going to go ahead and replace these um, as we go down the road, and the money will be there. But let's get one coming to show that we we are here. We are here for the fire department. Um, you know, boot drive money got taken away from them of six thousand dollars. I just so one one air breathing apparatus shouldn't be that big of a deal. We, and it would show the fire department that we are here for you and we stand behind you. The only money on equipment that's been spent in this fire station since I've been back here in Sangville has been fundraiser money. That is it. And that's illegal. Right. Fundraiser money is not supposed to be spent on equipment. Well, when we don't have majors because we don't You're have not, Honestly, people. that's, I mean, that's something that you need to work with Jeff about, but any yeah, donations to the fire department through the town isn't supposed to happen now. What is the money supposed to be used for? It's supposed to come through the town to us, and then we are the ones that have to approve it. So when I go through a boot drive and I donate money, I'm actually donating it to the general fund of Sangerville? Yep. That's correct. And that's what the sign should say. Because that's that's, that's very mistaken. That's, that's, that's exactly 100% right. correct. Fire department. That's yep. why we should have friends of the fire department. I mean, every other town does it, so it doesn't seem like it should. I just nope, guess not, if they don't no. stood on the hot top, all day long and spent their time doing it, I, the money should go back to them. That's all I'm saying. It has nothing to do, it has to do with what is legal and what is not legal. And we can only do what is legal, period. Correct, and I agree, and I didn't know anything about that. I'm right, so that's why I caution, I, and, I, and I caution everyone to make sure you know, you know, to, to just make sure you know what you know, because what we, we know what we know, and unfortunately, many times we're not out there. But we have five thousand dollars now that was taken and put in the general fund, so that is legally supposed to be used on equipment. So there's six thousand no. dollars. No, no, no. I thought you said it would. had to be used on equipment. No, no, no. 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 Was the fire department cautioned in the first place? No, what the, they I mean, this be. they've been doing it for years. We caution. We they. Once we knew it was illegal and that it was not friends of Sangerville and that they were there in the capacity as uh, our municipal fire department, and the money has to go into our general fund. Correct. That is the law. And so that is what we did. Um, and so Matt knows that now. And if they wanted to do a boot drive, they could get their own T-shirts and, and do their get their own bank account and, and, and do a friends up. We are, there's a non-profit already established right there. It's, it's no different than that wall right there. Can't remember if Matt was you or you was a check. Wanted that's to good. donate money to help fund that. Yep. When, when they come to the board, that's why we talked about this. No, please do not donate money for that project. Because if you donate money, it's got to go to the general fund. What you can do is, would you like to donate the material? So that the wall could get put in, yes. So wouldn't you guys so put that's that how they into that. the like fire department reserve? I mean, it kind of came from them. When, when, when goes to general. That just makes no sense to me. I guess 
I'm a little lost. But I do think I would like to see the step of the board starting to work with the people in the fire department and say, let's let's get started with this. We know it's going to be an issue within years from now. We've got to get things started. It would just be nice to see that one step taken, saying, go ahead and order your one pack. Then we've well, only got to sit down. And on, it, 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 as with regard to, I would I would defer to um, our town manager who is. Got years and years and years of experience as far as uh, what what would be a good solution for this problem. Yes, she's speaking from her heart. Absolutely, I, I and I. Matt, Matt is speaking for his department that what he thinks he needs. Um, there is that thing out there for an FDA that everybody's referring to that that could pass. Um, <clears throat> I don't know about bottles. I don't know. This is the last year for the 2.2 bottles. This is the last year for the 2.2 bottles. So be married if you mm-hmm. cannot get a bottle, to put on that pack. So that pack so, can be whatever, but if you can't put a bottle on it, it's a paper loop. And that's understood. I mean, that that's a that's a no start. And then you need a new pack when that when we are at that impasse. But it's it's my feelings. If the board is going to approve PACs, they, he needs to, because you're going to have an oddball that's going to be totally different than everything else, and the training involved in that one pack or everybody else is going to be a little bit different. The heads up display is going to be different. The whole thing's going to be different. And if you got two, then at least you got one truck that's got the same packs in it. You got to add a pot, add, you got to buy four bottles anyway. Um, if you buy four packs or eight packs, there you go. Now you're into eight thousand dollars in bottles, or sixteen thousand dollars in bottles, and in fifteen years, here comes another sixteen right at you. If, if you do anything, look at working in, in staggering. Sure, right. mm-hmm. and that's that's exactly what I'm saying. And and this is a big whack. You know, they keep going back. It's fifty-eight thousand dollars, and people don't realize what general government is. General government's mostly fixed costs. So now you've got to try to find out where you're going to get money for stuff that's fixed that you really can't change anything. Right. So, well, we have, but that, this is that, what that, I don't want to see. Separate. Separate. Well, no, right. This it money is, is from the same. But just I don't want to see what has happened the last year in this town where it's been nothing but a screaming match. Mm-hmm. It's been this board against us is how we felt. Um, that's why the town came out in droves and said, absolutely not. Like, I think that's why they came up and they kind of spanked you a little bit and said, fine, we'll, we'll take some of your money away and see how you like it. But I mean, I'm just saying, and it's not right. Well, and well the problem is, it's it's your Harvard, money too. It was, you know, it was really, but, honestly, I'm yeah. sitting there at the town meeting. And I'm listening to this person complain. Why do you only have a part-time town manager? You need a full-time this. This person's complaining. And then because all of a sudden... everybody's irrational because everybody's pissed. At, well, when the town office is only open two days a week, because yeah. that's all we can afford, it's not Be- our fault. Because, it's because those of what the are the numbers. Learn to communicate with the people. It shouldn't be a fight. All the time, it shouldn't be people talking at us, which you don't, Jody. I will 100%. You do not. We've talked on the phone. You are probably we can disagree, but we can still communicate. But the rest of the town is not like this. People are up in arms. They're pissed. They've had enough, and now they're just coming out and doing what they want. And you can sit and snicker if you want. That's what pisses people off. I'm just. I don't. What what do you do? In these meetings, some people management. Some people management, like start to really just listen and talk to people and understand what they're saying. And I understand you have a much bigger job. Now you've been cut. You've got to try to figure these things out. Um, but I think that just making a making me feel anyway. I won't speak for that or anybody that yes, the money's there, but we've got this budget problem. So we're just it's not even on the radar. We're not even talking about it right now. So that's but when you talk about communication. That is not what I just said. Right from the very beginning, when it was my opinion of what I think we should do, I told you that I feel that Matt and Jeff need to work through this, 100%. come up with a plan, and then come back to us so what we can do. That's how we need to work back and forth. Absolutely. I agree with that, 100%. And that's what I'm trying to say. Jeff and I had agreed in the budget meeting that we should start with two and see where we can go from there. And that was shot down. 
That's the only reason that the petition even went through, because if we had had an agreement then, there would never be a petition. Well, if it, and, and, and well, maybe I wouldn't even go there. Never mind. Um, okay. Um, well, um, you asked for four, and it was agreed you needed two. So no, it was agreed that we needed a plan to start replacing them. Four okay. was a decision on my behalf on what I thought would be a good spacing because you, like Jeff said, you get one, you're wasting your time. I, if I you get them all at one sense. time, then guess what? You're paying, you're buying them all at one time in 15 years. Correct. Again, that's why you take four and then in a couple, two, three years, you do another four. Or you start doing two a year for, and, and hope that you get them replaced before you're forced to replace the rest of them. But nobody wanted to work on that kind of a plan. It was just a, we'll put 10,000 in and we can look at one. Well, one was going to make more of a headache than mm -hmm. it was worth. So I had to be a spokesperson for the department, the people that are going to not be thrilled, and do what I'm asked to do, which is to support them. And I don't know what else to say. If, it, if you guys can't meet them in the middle a little bit, I don't know if we're going to have to worry about it because half of them are probably going to find somewhere else to fight fire. Then we get a big problem. I think another thing to consider too is the price of everything is going up daily, let alone specialized equipment. It just went up April first. It's going to if, go up again next year. You, this is this is more facts than that. Is it going to be four or three next year, or it'll be two next year? That petition was written to buy four packs for forty grand. But if you save the 40 grand and wait five years and you can only buy two packs, how does that work? No, that's a valid point. It's an investment for at least 15 years, but they're not meant to last 25. We're, yes, they're still passing a test right now, but that doesn't mean that they're always going to. That doesn't mean that they should be. You know, it's just like you're. 1992 Toyota Corolla, okay, it passed inspection this year, but <laughs> maybe just by a hope and a prayer. It doesn't mean that you should still be heading to California with it. It means you got lucky. It's Jeff, he'll get that bad girl running. He'll make it. Matt, how many people, how many people um, are um, uh, certified to wear packs? Ten. Ten. Okay, I thought it was seven. Okay. Ten. Okay. But how many people, and I'm not trying to play devil's advocate here, how many people that are certified normally show up at a fire? So I can almost always, at a fire, I can count on five that can wear a pack. That's why I was like, okay, four is a good place to start because the majority of everybody who's there is at least going to be using the new packs. The other ones, they're still there. They're still going to be used because... Jeff knows sometimes the smoke shifts the wrong way and the pump operator has to throw it back on because he can't breathe where he's standing. Uh -huh. Or it comes winter time and your regulator freezes up and right. you've got to throw the whole pack out. You don't have time to, to say, you got to sit there and throw it in the truck and thaw it out. You're going to throw it in the truck and grab the next one. Hey Matt, can we get together sometime this week or first time next week? Let's go through the inventory of bottles, how old they are, when they need to be replaced. The inventory of packs, how many you got, the age room. Yeah. This will be the third time. The third time. I haven't, I haven't done it. Third time's a charm. Yeah. Third time's a charm. Let me get that all together with you, and then we show it to the board and try to give them a picture of it. I just, I, I don't know what to say to these guys. They're not, they're not going to be. They, they were ready for support. Nice to have that tantalizing support for once. The town showed up and they showed their support for them, and they're really bright eyed and ready for the future. And this is gonna, this is. Well, I, I know my own opinion now. I'm not saying no. And I'm not saying this needs to take weeks or whatever to do this. Mm -hmm. But, you know, like that night you keep referring to, your plan when you came in then was 12 packs. And even on your petition, it's. It said this is this is the first phase of three, yeah. and yeah. now you're coming here tonight and you're saying five. So that's why that's why I'm saying I need you to work with him 
what is the right size of the department and what's the right number of packs. Because if we need five, and like if what Jeff's saying, two is the number, not one at a time, okay, that's pretty doable. You buy a couple, you could stagger this out at two this year, two next year, and Jeff, then you're fit. Jeff knows, and I, to speak to your that night talk, that night I just came with three options for the board and the budget committee. I came with a, an option to purchase all new, I came with an option to lease all new, and I came with an option of four a year over a phase of three, three phases. Yep. What we have for a department right now is what we need. We need 20 people. We need the 10 people to wear a pack. And just because I might only have five there one day, that doesn't mean that five can cover it. Because mm -hmm. if numeral burns, mm -hmm. then I got 10. Mm -hmm. And I need them. I need them available. And they've all got to be working. Um, so Jeff, I think he's got he's got 20 years in it. I've got 17 years in it. We both know the size requirements of this department. And we're there, but we need to we need to push something forward for the plan. I wasn't. I'm not saying four because we absolutely need four. I'm saying four was a number that would help space things out. You know, would two a year for a while work and help us? Of course it would. Will we get to a point probably where we're going to get maybe? six of them and then have to buy the rest outright more than likely because we're going to run out of bottles for the two twos or our regulation's going to change or something's going to fail that's why the plan <coughs> was stated the way that it was because if we don't act now on a plan with either four over the three years or get them all on a lease or whatever they're not going to all get replaced before something forces us those 2.2 bottles are only one more year. You cannot buy them after that. They're, they're obsolete. They're discontinued. Everything's going to the 4500s. Mm -hmm. So whether or not we have packs without a bottle to put on it, it's, it's obsolete as well. That's why I brought the options. That's why. No, I, I appreciate how hard you're working for, the, for, for our town. I do. I honestly do. And I know how passionate you are, Matt. Um, and um, we, as well, are working passionately for this town. So it, it, it's not us against you. It's let's, let's figure it out. I get that. My thing, Jody, is what I'm trying to reiterate is whether... So that 40 grand is sitting no matter what. <clears throat> so if it's going to sit in that account until we need it, why can't it be used to buy some equipment that isn't going to, we're not going to lose anything by buying the equipment. All we're going to do is benefit by, one, being safer, two, having a whole lot better morale with the department, and they're going to see that, okay, they're trying, as opposed to it just sitting in that account anyway. What, you know, I, I'm just not seeing where it's going to hurt. If it's sitting there this year, it'll be sitting there next year. So what's the difference if we what's spend it or if it's... Well, uh, obviously, you know... I get it. It's yeah. to do with the budget. And all that. It's just that if you can get a plan and then we stick to the plan rather than it's 40000 now, 40000 next year, then you're committing yourself to 15 to 40, 40, 40 again. It would be nice to just lay down a nice plan. And if it means four packs this year, if that's the plan we have to do, that's what we have to do. But... For me to just throw 40000 at it, and I don't think any of us truly know what is the actual number we need, and what's our plan for next year or the year after, how do you keep it mo moving, I don't think that's the right way to do it. I, so, I think plans are great. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying no, I'm just saying not today, and please hurry up, let's get a plan, and then we can whatever that truly means. Third time's a charm, Matt. Come on. Just out of curiosity, how does that work if we wait too long and then we can't afford four packs of that 40 grand? Uh, uh, qu quick question. It's, uh, um, is it $10,000 per pack 
plus bottle, uh, including bottles? That's including. So that 40,000 is four air packs, eight bottles, because you need a bottle and a spare for each sure. pack, right? sure. plus the masks that go with them. The so it's the complete <laughs> yes. turn. Yes, that we have. They obviously, as they do with everything, the old masks don't work. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're so not compatible. that 40,000 is all of it. Got it. And it so 10 per per unit 10, at this per, point? 10,000 per basically one full setup. So okay. the pack itself is like 6,700. Each bottle is over you know, right about 1,000, yeah. just over 1,000. Yeah. And then the mask is like 400. It ends up being right there, just handy to that 10,000. Okay. Okay. I verified with them again to make sure that the 40000 covers everything. He said, yeah, you're still okay right now. But when they bump again, Scott changes the pricing. They have the ability. That it's, oh, yeah. You need it. We Usually it. twice a year. Is that right? Usually it would be two bumps a year. Is that right? So it's going to continue to go up. It's never going back down again. So how does that work? I guess back to the original question. If it goes over that forty thousand, and we can't afford four of those setups eventually, because there was a petition for four packs for forty grand, but now you can't get say down the road you can't get the four packs for forty grand. They cost more. How does that work? Well, I mean, do you, do you mean in this in this year? I mean, the petition was written to buy four packs for forty grand, so you've allotted forty grand to buy the four packs. You're saying we can. We're not going to buy them now, but down the road, we want we finally do need to buy them, and now they're over 40 grand. We can't, you, we don't have enough money in that allotment to buy the full, what was agreed upon in the petition. So how does that work? Well, I think I think you're getting I think you're getting down the road too far. But but, but am I though? I mean, yeah. How? I think I think you are. Because I don't really think that this process should take very long. I'm just, I'm just trying to... I'm, I mean, you know, I, I don't want to see this stretch out six months, David. I don't either, trust me. I'm that's just curious. Price I don't, well, and I don't again, want it to happen. I'm if, afraid of it happening. If, in know? fact, you needed all new new bottle, new, new complete units, and those were completely 100%, and we couldn't use them tomorrow, we, as a board, would have to sit here and figure out how we're going get, to get new air packs um, and how many we need. Um, but... You know that that amount is forty thousand, and so it would be the amount that you could buy. But I, I do think, you know, let's let's. Um... My thing is, let me. If Jeff say Jeff and I agree on getting two a year or something along that line, you know, why can't we throw the support that way and then let me continue to write my grants every year. And if we get a grant for the rest, great. If we don't, then we keep working towards it. Like I said, 100 hours of grant writing, I got my third grant of the year today. I mean, I'm, like somebody said at the town meeting, I'm the only one doing this and I'm happy to do it, but Honestly, man, I would like to get you some help. I don't want you being the only one. I don't, I don't. I would like to have some, and nothing against you or in any way, but I would like to reach out to something for a resource that maybe knows a loophole or knows something about There's, writing one that would give us more opportunity. I already, I use a grant writer. I, for all the big grants, I use a grant writer. She has agreed to do it at no cost for Sangerville because of our financial situation. She was the one that secured hundreds of thousands of dollars for Greenville this year. It's just there are different parameters for different towns, different populations, different financial situations, and we didn't qualify. Mm. Um, well, we, I'll continue to keep doing it, and I have no problem doing it. I just... We can't, in my eyes, just let it go and hope and hope and hope that maybe someday we'll get the grant for that. What can you share with us, the grant that you were, were awarded this, today? This grant today was the Ed McDonald Safety Grant. So it goes towards um, safety-related items. So traffic vests, LED flares, stop and slow paddles, cones, stuff like that. Um, How much is it for? It's up to 2050 for that stuff. Um, That's every, fantastic. Like I said, every, that is fantastic. Every grant is 
targeted to something. Yeah. You know, safety yeah. grants targeted to safety related <clears throat> stuff. You have um, safer <coughs> grants that are targeted to payroll stuff. You have forestry grants are targeted to forestry equipment. You have communication mm -hmm. grants. Sure. They all are targeted to one particular thing except for the huge FEMA grants, which We've, we've applied to, but we haven't gotten anywhere yet. Um, there's talks that that money is going away. Yeah. The federal government is probably going to pull it. Um, and so those big things that pay for possible fire trucks or $300,000 worth of gear is probably disappearing. Um, so the thought of hopefully maybe getting one of those is getting slimmer and slimmer. Um, I keep trying. And I always will. That's why I use the grant writer for that stuff because FEMA does have criteria. And there is part of your narrative, the way that it's written is, so that's why I use her. She's, that's what she does. She does grants. Literally, that's it. Um, well, awesome. um, Jeff, you would make this a priority working with him to get this going like as fast to as make possible. Mountains. I said, one time they'd come in and I'd been right on and got stuff for them. I told my dad this week, I had it this week. Do the same thing with Matt. Yeah. I definitely follow through on the stuff I said in the room. I just want to make something happen as soon as possible, one way or the other, because yep. the next time I meet with these guys, I, I want to have an answer other than, sorry, you're not getting it yourself. Because that's it's not going to go wrong. Well, and just one last word with regard to grants. Um, you know, um, this board has been trying to, to, has been asking to be able to write for grants to get an incredible amount of money for this town. And, and the town has said no. So, you know. Well, there's a whole lot more to that than just applying for a grant for a year. There's, there's more to that. You know, so I understand what you're saying. We're we're trying. Um, what, we, you know, it's all about money. It's all about the bottom line, the dollars, right? And uh, that's what we've we've been trying to to do that. But I won't say any more about that. I um, um, so okay. I think we're going to table that then for tonight, and um, we'll move on. Does that? Yes? Yeah. So the FEMA inspection was, you're talking about manager's report now. No, 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 no a new business, Matt Bockler. Um, C, we're going to sign the documents to appoint uh, Jeff Libby as town manager, road commissioner, and local health officer. So. Is this a full time position? Is this what? Is this a full time position and appointment? No. So this is part time? Yeah. Yes. So, um, uh, I vote that we're going to, um, or I will, um, yeah. So does this, Jody, just make him go from interim to part-time? Is that what this is? It's appointing him as a town manager. Okay. Correct, yes. Um, so I'll make a motion to uh, appoint Jeff Libby as our town manager. And as our local health officer and our road commissioner. Second. So your hours will be the same, Jeff? Your hours will be the same. To the five. We'll have a five. Okay. Sorry. Any discussion? Vote. Three. And we'll sign this paperwork. So now. Oh, no. <laughs> Holy cow, Jeff. I thought mine was bad. <laughs> yours is yours. <laughs> you got a doctor <laughs> Okay, so we're moving on to the next item eight town manager's report. Uh, FEMA was here today to look at the cemetery slide. Uh, there's four different individuals with them, uh, preservation group. Uh, they all looked at the slide. They took some GPS readings. 
Um, they're going to help us out a little bit with it. Um, we have to contact an engineering firm. Um, actually, they want us to contact two engineering firms and get two quotes of what that would cost to fix it or a plan. Um, I'll talk with Darigo. I told him I'll call Darigo first because he's a hydrologic engineer. He'll take care of that. I want to see what the cost is going to be because if Anytime you get engineers up here, there's going to be money involved. Oh, yeah. And uh, there was another lady here that deals with grave sites and things like that. And their concern is even though there's a road there right now that we've got blocked off, that don't mean there's not bodies there. Oh. So she was cautioning if we have to slope the road down, we may find something there. And what would be our plans? Where would they go? Um, so. Bottom line, they, they took a bunch of information and they'll get back with us. Uh, they told me it was really no hurry on having to get all these reports done, but uh, to stop looking into them. Um, have you been talking to um, um, uh, our sextant as far as... I have not yet. Okay. I mean, obviously he's aware of the slide. It, or maybe he's yes, not. Yes, he's the one who brought it to me. Okay, okay. Yeah. Um, but I do know years ago, in that older back section. Correct. What we thought was empty lots were not empty lots. We, we went down there today. So then. nothing would surprise me with what she's saying as far as the road and what may or may be where. That slope is about like this this paper right? This edge. I saw That's it when it was coming across yeah, the yeah. bridge. So you got all the trees there, but that slope being like that with all the trees growing up on it, mm -hmm. and it's all gravel. That's so good. Grave sites there are graves there now that are crucial to this going. Where the big slide is, the big slide is you're probably here to the wall of the right. first grave. Oh. But where Dale's talking about down near the main road, yeah. you're only talking a table, but it looked like it was an old road there one time. They're close. And so one of those girls was here about preservation of grave sites and stuff. It's not a good situation. But it's not really yeah. sliding that bad down there, but they took GPS yeah. readings and because that, that's like well again like as that, yeah. as uh -huh. Jeff said it's it's gravel so there it's There's no binary yeah. to it yeah no and where it did slide if you look at your river your river kind of hooks right there so that current's going against working against that bank the whole time mm -hmm. because we had wet went up that didn't help yeah the rain in the summer helped and we got all that yeah. water from the flood and well and now that it's now that it is rolling you know that portion it just and most of the trees are gone Yep. Because the river took them down. There's yep. like one or two left there. So all that went down. <coughs> well, and what had been happening over the last five or six years is the bigger trees were getting big enough that they were starting to tip. So we did some of the bigger ones we cut out just to try to help hold the stumps in to help yep. that. Yeah, we cut that. We topped them so that the, the root system would stay there right. and hold it, um, hoping that it wouldn't slide. But it did. So is there... Another engineer that might specialize more in. You got Darago and you got Plymouth. They're both local. Both deal with roads. Both right. deal with dirt. Okay. Those are the two. Those are the two game players. Really for that one. What's that? I didn't know what that type. If it was. Yeah, it was like a special. Yeah, I mean, because you're dealing with a lot of water in this one rather than a normal. Ricky's Ricky's been up here because they're drilling the well. Water district drilling the well. Ricky's been up here, but I, I, I got so much stuff going on guilt that I couldn't break away and go over there and see Ricky. I'll give him a call. Okay. Uh, would, the, would the National Guard come up and do anything? Um, you're thinking Army Corps of, Na well, yeah, uh, Army Corps yeah. of Engineers. Yeah. Yeah. Would they come? Well, I mean, obviously that would be ideal. Um, but, but I'm kind of hoping with the FEMA... Yeah. Foot in the door. Yeah, exactly. We got a government agency in there. We get the engineers in there. And then they bring out the Army Corps. They need to be able to help pull. Oh, okay, yeah. Easier I than a recall. Be, oh, that would be oh, great. Yeah. Do you guys have any thoughts on who's going to do the work once you figure it all out? No. That's going to be somebody's got some huge. Yeah. And it'll be just like any other engineer. Really, they're going to once yeah. you fall into an engineer's plan, they're going to solicit bids and. and that's what I do for yeah. But they're the ones that's going to do that, not us. Yeah. But there's more than two engineering firms local in Maine. Yeah, I don't know. Are you reaching out to other people or are we just stuck on these two? No. Those, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Those are two I've used most often. That's been used around here most often is Deerigo or yeah. Plymouth. Yeah. And uh, I look and see what 
we can keep money down. No, I got you. They, they said that's actually, why I'm asking if you reached out to other, you know, engineering firms that are in Maine that could possibly keep that cost down for the time. Yeah. Do you uh, throw out some names? Or what are you thinking? They're like BHB. I've heard that name before. Yeah? yeah, they're good. What is right? it? I'm working with them right now in Old Town, so. Yeah. You know, they're, they're good yeah. instruments. Is it what is it? B H B. My first conversation is really going to be how much it costs you to come up. You no, know, I got it. I got it. That's what I'm saying. I mean, it's mean, worth phone call, right? Yeah. Now, do you work for an engineering firm? No. You? No, I'm a consultant. I get hired by the state. I'm a, I'm a construction inspector. Ah. Uh, oh. Okay. That's. So that's all I got on FEMA. Uh, Matt, you do the flags in town? Doing it this weekend. You've got enough? I, I don't have any space. So. I believe so. Okay, let me know in the flags. Is that all right? We're going to get the plan. That's done. <coughs> That's all I have. For town manager's report? Yep. Okay, I just want to back up um, for one minute here. Um, to, um, I've got an application here that um, these come through occasionally um, from the Timber Hitch um, for a, when they have an, um, a party or a wedding or whatever, event. an event, that's the word. Um, we have to sign the paperwork for their alcohol um, license. Um, it's a one-off every time because it depends on who's serving the alcohol that we're, mm -hmm. that we're certifying. So, um, I make a motion that we, I don't see any, I don't see where we sign this. That Second page. page. Oh. Second page. Yep. Uh, I'll make a motion, uh, let's see <coughs> when this is, okay, that we um, are granting the Timber Hitch um, uh, their uh, li liquor licensing and uh, alcohol beverages uh, operation for the um, date of the event is June 29th, 20. 24 from 3 to 11 p.m. So I grant them permission to go ahead. Um, What's your motion? That's my motion to grant them permission. Oh, okay, got it. Does anyone want to second? I would second that. Okay. Okay. All right. Sorry, Jeff. We'll go back to road commissioner's report. Um, working on the beavers. Uh, we've got some beaver problems. Scott has been out there three times. That's the gym. So now we got the state tracker out there that's going to try to remove the beavers. Um, it, we had to sign a contract with them uh, for a pool of money. Uh, you remember what the dollar number was? Seventeen hundred. Seventeen. Whoa! To remove cool. the beavers? Oh, it's crazy. It's like five cents for. The guy. For what? I can. What did he say? So actually, for a no, oh, no. Wait a minute now, because it is legal now for the landowner. For landowner. So I did notice the other night going to camp. They're already you on see the. Him? Yep, I did. Mm -hmm. So we ought to get with Chris because Chris owns part of Anderson. I think Chris would be in favor. Yes. But I, I know it's through Inland Fisheries, but I don't, we've never had a landowner that would agree with this. Yes. So I don't know if you've dealt with it yet and what that process is. It's not about a few or not a process. This one is. This one Ours is. On uh, Anderson. So, 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 so we contacted a couple people. <laughs> yeah. uh, myself and Scott Reynolds. But we didn't get a lot of callbacks. Um, the one guy that did call was from Milo. He wanted a hundred dollars a beaver, hundred dollars a beaver, and fifty cents a mile coming from Milo to Guilford and back to Milo checking um, on the traps. What, isn't there a guy in Abbott that does it too now? Is it Bates? It, is it something legal that like we have to trap them and relocate them? Well, no. Yeah. No, the only way you can, the, as far as the municipality, we're not allowed to, but that's where you get into a landowner, a landowner because you're flooding. Okay. A landowner, I, the way they changed the law, I'm, I'm going to screw this up, but I'm, the landowner can contact Inland Fisheries and Wildlife, They and somehow, I don't know the details, 
a permit can be issued. Because they're a nuisance. And the landowner can dispose of them. But as far as the town. Consider it probably taken care of. Right, exactly. <laughs> but in the meantime, have we signed this contract? We, he's out there doing it now, but it's not $1,700 just for these vehicles. So this contract could go for the whole year. So if we got beavers someplace else, we we work off that off that money until it's until it's gone. So where's the one the problem one that you have now that you're talking about? By like Glenwells. Burroughs Road. Yeah. Burroughs Road down and past the cemetery. Too, yeah. it? So think about think about it this way: you've got a, a 30 inch culvert, and every time you have Scott, well, when you have a contract to go, mm. that culvert is going to beat up. And sooner or later, the culvert's yep. going to move in, move in, move in. And I just purchased one culvert, and it was almost five grand yep. in, in that diameter. So if we don't do something about it, and we keep 100 running. Yeah. Come down but I'm just no, no. What, what I'm right. wondering about, though, you know, like Mike said, the what we're talking about on the Anderson, because Anderson gets plugged all the time, yeah. and, and it's the same the, issue. Look at the culvert, all the dirt yes. falling through the rocks. But it's getting small. Mike's land small. actually gets flooded out because of all of this. So mm -hmm. yeah. this landowner may be willing to help us through the inland to help take care of that problem. Yeah. So, but what I'm wondering is, could we dive in a little bit over on these other spots? And see if there is a cooperative landowner, oh. and we may be able to yeah. do the same. But that's thing. being impacted. Yeah, yeah, that makes and sense. And then we had, uh, I did it through the mill. Um, it's through USDA, which I didn't under, didn't realize they do this, but USDA has a division of nuisance animals and a team that comes out. So they were trapping pigeons. <laughs> on the roof of the mill. We did that for two years, actually. Oh, Crazy how many they get out of there. Yeah. Um, but they also, they do all nuisance animals, whether... That's who this is true. That's who this guy's through. through. Okay, that's what I was wondering. But he, he approached us with a concept of where you take the your culvert and then oh, they yeah. install a secondary culvert. Yeah, yeah, then yeah. It actually goes out and then they like pig fence around it. Beaver deceiver. Yeah, the beaver deceiver is what he actually yeah. called it. Yeah. Um, so they hear the noise over there and they try and to And they plug work on it, something over here because the they hear the, the flowing water. I don't like it. You I don't like them? Wanna, You're well, not a fan? I watched just, just moving your problem up there. <laughs> exactly. But when it, the the one on 15 deal. had it and it actually worked for a couple of years. Then it got all And then it's all, yep, it's gone now. They actually I, I ripped like it out. I like the nuisance permit. And I think that's I'll talk to Chris about it and I think we can take care of them there yep. very easily. Well, I know he can. <laughs> but I, those other ones, if we could find similar landowners. Yep. This is the only place right now that we have any views. Oh, it's not. It's just the ones you don't. It's the one that's bothering. Yeah, that. yeah. Correct, because it's no different. If you go down past on Silver's Mills last year, which never had a problem before, but down on Silver's Mills, down by uh, the other gray on the other end, oh. before Wilson's Field, there's that LBW. bog and one culvert right there that plugged up and was going over the road. So we were sitting at our house one day. We have a two-acre farm pond in our backyard. We were sitting there, it was like 7, 7.30 at night, and I looked up and said, what is that? And there was a beaver walking through my driveway thinking that he was going to go down and get in my pond. <laughs> Out of nowhere. It's like, where did, like he came off Room 23, he got an Uber or something. Yeah, like that. Um, her little pond at Jazz's house, same thing. She had a beaver event last year. Yeah. It's the time of year that the... They're kicking the adolescents out. <laughs> I was thinking you went the wrong driveway that night then. <laughs> So we'll ask Chris about the ones down there and see yeah. if he would would do that. Yeah. Okay. So um, so that was a road commissioner's issue. Still going. Okay. G carry so, on. Carry so on. I had Scott Reynolds come up and we cleaned all the park up. <coughs> more the park. There was trees down. They dumped big piles of dirt. We leveled that all out. Um, we cleaned up all around. The guys got to mow, pull all that in. Um, and also down there. The flagpole was broke, so they approached me about the flagpole. So we bought a piece of pipe to fix the flagpole. Then Jason came back and. Um, Martin, Martin Taylor, um, his brother has actually bought a flagpole, a lighted flag, oh, flagpole okay. to put down there. Wow. So we got a piece of pipe that we used okay. for. Okay. All right. Well, so. Okay. So that's being taken care of. So. Good. As a matter of fact, I drove past the park just. 
was it last night or something? And I thought, whoa, that looks great. Yeah, I mean, the road's great. graded. It look it yeah. looks fantastic. So we got that done. Uh, the last thing was when we did the cold patching, we forgot the off Dexter Road that had some big stuff in it, and uh, so Santos had come and uh, made a request of uh, doing something with the road this spring, and I thought we got it and we missed it. So uh, Lawson went out first part of the week matched in some great big holes, so that one should be better for now. Great. That's all I have. Good, good. Okay, um, now, so, um, well, we can hit on uh, Selectman's concerns, but then are we back, going back up? <laughs> okay, so item 10, any Selectman's concerns? Jeff? I guess not at this point. Okay. Um, I think, I think I'm good. So, now we are going up to um, the town meeting. Uh, old business. Item six, town meeting. Um, so uh, I think the most important thing that we need to deal with tonight is the the reduction in our budget. Correct. And I think I think should we just plan on that for tonight? I think that's really, that's the big thing. Okay. Do we have copies of it? Or no? I do not. I think you have what we worked on, right? I have mine. Okay. Thank you. I bring my Good night. Things. Thank you. Well, I ended up, because Jeff wanted to know yeah. the, the savings on payroll and so forth. So I put, put a sheet together for that. Savings on what did you say? The payroll. Yeah. From I was broke out. <laughs> You look at it, that change of as we're going through it because Patrick's, pay, Patrick's pay. It works. Okay. Versus okay. what? Oh, okay. Just being paid. So this is I just, where we're right really This is so what he's been paid. This is what Patrick's been paid. Switch. So you saved about five thousand dollars switching. Okay. Okay. Right. And this so is projected out government. through mm -hmm. the end of the year. And this is what we have. So we have the budget amount. Okay. Subtract Patrick's pay. Got it. Just pay to date. Got it. Just pay to the end of the year. Okay. And the balance is left. Okay. Um, did that both for Sam and I also. And what we did with this is I did it at her regular rate mm -hmm. and at her raise at a raised rate. Okay. Okay. Here's her regular rate. This would be the raised rate. Okay. And if you follow it down through, it also this is what. Um, would be to the end of the year. Okay. Um, this is mine. Okay. To the end of the year. And then these are the two. Um, this would be Sam. Okay. This would be me. Okay, so these we budgeted. And that's that, that's the same the 80. Those, that, yeah, yeah. These are big question marks because. So this would be if we did get the raise. And if we did not get the raise. It would be okay. over by this okay. or over by that. All this stuff is fixed. So, wow, so we were even under bank even charges, even staying deeds. at the rate we were. You could see when yeah. we were at 2800, we didn't move that okay. advertising. Yeah, I thought, I, I thought I had um, plugged it in. Well, I stepped 50 we that. that. But but that's, we spent, so, uh, I kind of did that. He's done a lot of the budget off his sheet as far as where we're cutting. Okay. This was the computer. Like the computers. Yeah, I'll listen to him. This year. The computers, mine already died. The other mm -hmm. ones are like 15 years old. Everything's backed up with a pen drive. There's no solid state or anything in them. We were going to do this this year because next year we got to do the trio system. That's oh, like $15,000 no sure. because it's no longer. Next year is going to be expensive. Uh, so Just the trio. Canceled it. This right here was uh, Tom Hobbs' maintenance. Like we we're never going to spend that. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that was if you get all the whistles and bells and everything. Mm -hmm. So that and that's how you said that at the meeting. That's health insurance. Yeah. You, have no, you, can't, you, can't, you can't change that. Mm -hmm. General liability crime, that's fixed. General liability's fixed. That's fixed. Workers' comp, you, you know how that works. Public office, that is for Michelle and myself mm -hmm. to, if we make a mistake on your books that we're bonded in. Mm -hmm. You pay that FICA. We're going to look into FICA. There may be some savings there on FICA. Mm -hmm. Yeah, how, how would that be? Because mm -hmm. the wages are reduced. Oh, oh. Income oh, because, I see. Oh, that's projected. That's, I got that's you. projected. Okay, yeah. Income but protection still, that's, is minimal. Yeah. It's not going to do anything. Income protection is insurance. 
Are you you are you following along? That? Okay. I already. I mean, I, yeah, yeah. I have, you know, yeah. There's already so many fixed buckets. Take there's, a look at this, this and that's that's the, salary. Uh, this is all stuff. Mm -hmm. you notice there's nothing hooked up for that, so there's no mm -hmm. no no money for that. This is the old town hall contract. All that stuff's all. I don't know. I got numbers there. Michelle, what? Division thirty. You look under uh, old municipal hall. There's a twenty six hundred and seventeen dollar. That was Wentworth. Oh, okay. That was one with that we had to pay. That goes someplace yeah. else now. Okay, so that'll disappear. Engineering contracting. That's ten. Uh, that's going to go away. Mm -hmm. um, legal fees. We're still checking on that. So we don't know all the calls that have been made and mm -hmm. things with legal. When was the last time we were billed by legal? IRA, that's uh, if they choose to. Uh, we had one just recently. Thing. Oh, okay. But it was Redmond and Winchell. I don't think the period that we have is Freddie Flair. Freddie So the difference um, is that. I don't think I've gotten the bill from them, but I can, I can certainly email yeah. you. Um, he's got to me right. doing checking that tomorrow. So about okay, where we stand for a bill. Yep. I don't know what you're going to find for a thousand. I don't know. But you want to take that and. I get plenty more copies. Yep. It's an interesting dilemma. What's <laughs> that? It's an interesting dilemma. Yeah, it's a. Re I mean, it's distressing. Dilemma. Well, I can. I mean. Yeah, yeah. Well, and, and these when we do these budgets, because everybody thinks there's all kinds of fluff. There is no fluff. No. So what we present was real to the best of in how we explained it. I mean, was the town managers over some in case we need him to be full time? Yes. It was to do that, or it was a real number because we need to buy computers. It was a real number because you don't do maintenance. So those type of things, I guess, sure. If all right, we're not gonna can't do this because it's not budgeted. No computers, no maintenance, none of this. But when you got all these line items that are just 100 percent fixed cost, you know you can't say you're not gonna pay unemployment. You're not gonna pay. Right. Right. Well, and we've also heard from residents that want to do the online registration. Oh, okay. Well, rapid renewal is kind of through the state, so you're going to lose some money there because you're going to lose your, lose your municipal fee. But our computers won't do it. Can't, won't you can't it. do it. I can't do it. And the other thing, and honestly, it's been a complaint of ours forever. The way their computers are set up is like no office in the world. <laughs> I mean, they should have a hub, and the computer should all feed back. It should all go up, and yeah. you should have security, and that's not how it works. No. This whole relic over here, you have to leave on, and this one works back for this. We do have a server, but that's the one that's the hub that yeah. is well, and it's expensive to it, fix. If, if that's the, one the building that's burned, the you better grab the server. Forget yeah. about the people. Leave the people and they, get, grab yeah. the server. Because the other thing is, so when Sam gets backed up, she's the only computer in the office that can do credit cards, debit cards. So if you're doing a check in cash, I can take you. But if you're uh, doing debit and credit cards, I can't touch you. Uh, so she can have a line deep of four people, and they're all doing debit cards, and I can't help. Uh, There's nothing I can do. Unless it's fishing game, which doesn't have to go through Trio. I can jump in there and use the Moses system and be able to pull the registration off and a receipt, and then we can log it in later, as long as it's not a credit card. Oh, or right. debit card. <laughs> if it's check or cash, we can log it in after. The, the but if it's a left. credit or debit, you're still, yeah, you, um, yeah. you're dead in the water. Yeah. I mean, we have computers in our office, but at the end of the day, you're functioning not a lot above a pad and paper. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. what you can do with this one, you can't do over here. This can't and I can't do there. new registrations off my computer either, because I can't print a title. I can't access oh, the title. Right. right, right, right. So right. that's what the budget was for last year. So just to show that we did our job and did as much as we possibly could, that was going to be the budget for this year. So it was actually we actually cut the budget from last year. So yeah, exactly. So we got because we're concerned with everybody. I mean, groceries for everything's up. So there is one number that obviously because you're going to stay at uh, part time, you are not going to be a full time town manager. You will always be a part time manager uh, for now. But the way the way quickly, Jody, the yeah, way Jeff yeah. has this here, yes, he's gone oh. down through every item that's not fixed cost, right? 
if you take out the computers, you take out that maintenance thing, you use those numbers off salary. Oh, did you? Get, are those he, on there? He's done all oh, of those. Oh, 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 oh. And oh, I thought to, we had to cut money, out money anything in the bag that's right not here. fixed. Yeah. And exactly to what we're spending on Michelle or or Jeff. Right. We're still twelve thousand dollars short to get through the year. And that's it. And honestly, I mean, postage is there. Everybody wants more mailers. Well, I guess we probably didn't be planning on doing any of them. Right. I mean, we could cut that, but then you only have one more certified mailing this year, and that's about eight hundred, nine hundred dollars when I do the certified mailings, and that's going to be God. October for the foreclosure for the foreclosures. And they have to be certified. And they have to be certified. Yeah. 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 And so that already, is a hard number as well. I mean, that's, that's no, but I mean, it's what. Yeah. I, but it, to yeah. sit here today, she's probably one hundred percent true. That's probably no one history of. <coughs> where we usually are as far as how many foreclosures, yep, that's yep. the number. Yeah, yeah. But the reality is, is when we hit to that timeline for what the tax bills are going to be, it could be 1500 it mm -hmm. could be 500 mm -hmm. We don't, right. until we get there, we're not going to know that. It's more, really, it's the, it's the gamble. Do you cut everything out as you best you can, knowing you're going to have a shortfall of ten to $12,000? And that does not allow special? that does not allow for our employees to have a raise. A raise. I, I, of any no, and you didn't even do cola. No. No, that's what we're talking. Is cola. I mean, don't you have to do cola by law or no? no? Oh, you don't. You don't have to. Oh, I did not know that. Um, I mean, that doesn't make me happy. I wouldn't make the employees suffer. No, I agree. I agree. I mean, I think. Did you do the math? I did the, the, the math. Yeah, that's what those sheets are. That's what those are. I projected out to the end of the year with Sam and I not having a raise and Sam and I going with the raise that we had talked about earlier and what the difference was going to be. But I didn't want to be, like, assuming. That's why I right, wanted no. to wait, especially when we have such a huge cut. We have to make it fit our budget. So I wasn't going to assume. So that's why I wanted to bring it to the board. What do we, what do we do? What I would say, it would, my, my opinion would be to go ahead with those, all of those, and, and know that we're still 12000 that we're, we still have to find $12,000. And then if we do a special, which we know we're going to have to do a special, mm -hmm. we know, um, I would say that we try to, to, Uh, ask for the twelve thousand to to I mean to get through the rest of the budget. Agree because I don't want to use it. Worst case scenario, we have the fifteen thousand dollar contingency, and that's what it's there for. Yep. Is yep. for this purpose. That's right. I would really. Because even, I mean, there's still things in there. I mean, there's a, I mean, a lot of numbers we're hoping for and we're probably damn close as far as supplies and this and that. Right. So, I mean, if we really run it like a tight ship, can we get 12,000 down to six? Just over, you know what right. I mean, without... What uh, what do we as far as roads? I mean, that's not doing anything on roads, right? It's no, that's a different package. So this is just yeah. oh, this is just general. Just general. Okay, general. and that's what they cut. Oh, man. Yeah. The other thing to think about: we do have a mistake in the article because, and I will take partial blame. I guess I was under the assumption that Wreckfield was in that number. Is not. Under what one? I thought Wreckfield. Oh yeah, that was was yes. part of that number. Yeah, no. So and we already I know. I didn't even catch it either. But I would really like to do honestly going forward because everything we're really doing, everything we're doing right now as far as the Wreckfield is road maintenance or is mowing along. Mm -hmm. There's no more. You know, we don't buy basketballs, we don't buy baseballs, we don't do any of that stuff. Right. So, really, for me, that instead of being a separate line item, 
it really ought to be a line item under public works because that's what everything you're talking about is. So that's why I put that on the roads because it is a road. You Correct. Know, I didn't put thing do anything about feet. Yeah. So no, we don't. That's where is the trying. mowing? Where is the mowing though? The mowing for the contractual. Oh, oh. Well, that's the other thing too. That's um, okay. kind of a. In the past, I don't know why we do it this way, but you know, it's in the budget they put it on a line item because we mow this piece of lawn, and this is what this one cost. And yeah, yeah, yeah. The little we used piece to... by the town garage is a cost, and the cemetery is a cost, and you know, the ball fields a cost, and out by twenty three, the little yeah. flower things a cost. And that's how the how the contract comes in. Yeah, All but to me, it's, it's, yeah. to me, what it ought to be is this is the cost. It ought to be when you're putting it out for bid. This is what we want to mow. And this is this is the cost. It right. ought to be right because you're not going to mow the ball field and not mow right. This or, it, right. You know it has I mean? to be it's a complete actually, contract. Yeah, it's it's the contract. It's one thing. Right. Right. You know, you can split it out on twenty line items, but at the end of the day, it's all one. Right. So, um, so we the ball field isn't in in general. Mm -hmm. I don't know where we're going to put the mowing. The mowing is. The mowing's the problem. Oh, and that's like five. Mm -hmm. It's not a lot of money, but it's money. It needs to be brought up as special. Mm-hmm. It was an oversight. Mm-hmm. But I think, like I said, going forward, that's how I would Yeah, that would clean it up. That, you know, when we look at, same idea, if you look at public works, you've got all these lines. Mm -hmm. In public works, we have a rec field section and if you want to split it out to mowing or however, but it ought to be under that number instead of a separate number. Yep. Because we're never not going to mow that field or whatever. No, <laughs> no. Separating it speed doesn't make sense anymore. Right. For how well things are done. Okay. So, um, but with that said, that then does not accommodate. Any no, it makes your twelve thousand dollars worse because now you're at seventeen. Mm. Honestly, that's the mm -hmm. you know that's what I was trying to say was, and you know I'm, like I said I kind of said it earlier I wasn't being smug about it, you know I'm, some a lot of the townspeople well why do we only have a part time town manager yeah. then they reduce the dot the budget so sitting there it's like well they don't want less less things but you know so. An easy way to fix the budget is you make that go to reduce the hours of our employees. Correct. Yet, yet they're working absolutely to, correct to the so especially then, the last you know, couple of weeks. That's the problem. Is, I'll just retire. So you three can uh, no <laughs> retire. There you go. Six million. Nope. We can't afford your golden parachute. <laughs> No, no, no. We need you, Jeff. So. Um, I, I think you cut everything you can cut, and we have a special, and we talk about it again. Okay. I don't know what else to do. I yep. don't think we want to cut services out of the town office. No. Because that's not the only thing. We were, is, not when we were trying to increase them. No, but right. I mean. Thoughts, Jeff? No. <laughs> Certainly a dilemma. Every election has repercussions. That's right. That's mm -hmm. right. And every, um, you know, um, vendetta and, and, you know, gotcha is... But every election has repercussions, whatever the repercussions are. Just... So it's, um, and I don't want to dive into this tonight because this is too important what we're talking about. But back to the building really quick. And this is a you because you've talked to them. We already know we got to pick a contract engineer, but what is the timeline from when we call an engineer to get a full bid package back with quotes? Are we talking two months? Three months? No, I don't think so. I mean, 30 would, days? It would be my wishes you go right back to Carpenters because they already got the prints, they've already been in the building numerous times and have them come and give you that what you need. But I mean, I'm just, and the reason why I'm asking to help ease everybody's mind of what we're trying to do here, 
I'm just trying to understand, do we think we're going to have a special town meeting in two months from now, three months from now? Because I think you're going to find that engineering force is going to drive the special town meeting. If you want to do the engineering report, we can do it. Well, that's a different conversation, but I just, you know what I mean? I'm yeah. just trying to think. Yeah, that, that. Because we can't keep kicking we, this We've got to get that road. done. Right, right. 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 So if, I mean, if we're all in agreement that, and again, that was my idea. I'm everybody speak. If we're going to maintain status quo, office hours, office staff's hours don't get cut. We cut everything we can cut that's non-fixed as far as what we're spending on or what we're buying or whatever, so we can't get it any tighter. And knowing that we're gonna to have to have a special in a couple of months, in two months we're gonna have a better idea where we are and you're gonna know what that number would be. True. That's what I'm trying to. True. I mean, we could try that if we get there and you have a special and it fails again, okay, that's when we go two months. days a week or whatever it takes. But mm -hmm. you'd have to do that then to, to get to what to that number is going to be. Yep. Um, so what you're saying is kind of that engineering, that package is what's going to drive when that special is. I think it's, yeah. I fully yeah, agree. no, I think you're right. So maybe we can get a, um, now uh, the thought did occur to me that, and I agree with you that Carpenter was there from day one. So they have all the historical knowledge and they can pick up where they left off. Um, the only thing is we did have complaints at the town meeting that I heard that, you know, you know, which, which are engineers are you going to use? Are you going to get bids? You know, do we put this big job, it's going to be a very big engineering job out to bid. They bid on doing the job. I have a bad idea. It's not a bad idea. Mm. I mean, I honestly, yeah. you can say all these names and sure, I've heard of these. Right, right. I don't know any of them. Yeah. I agree no, no. with the theory I, of what he's saying. If Carpenter did this 20 years ago, mm -hmm. and they've been involved recently, the reality is, is they should be able to step in and, and do what up. we want right. for a lot less money than anybody else. Mm -hmm. um, we know what that number is, but then step through the door and just do that assessment. Right, but I want to know, I, I really would like to know, I think what I, my opinion is, and what we heard from that town meeting is, everybody wants to know what's going to cost to fix that building. And the only way you're going to know what it's going to cost to fix that building, in my opinion, is to have your engineer, your engineer not only do his report, but he takes it right to bid, and he comes back to us, this is my bid, this is my report, and these are the bids that I have to complete all of this work, and this is the sign-off cost. So your A to Z, start to finish, this is how much it costs. And I think if you don't have that to go back to town meeting... Yeah, you're, you don't have a solid number. You don't have a solid number right. because if you can... And again, I try to say it at the meeting. I, wasn't, I was trying to be respectful. Dennis and everybody on that committee did a phenomenal job and everybody tried to get a number they could. But that's not the same number as an engineer is going to come up with because it's his name who's going to sign off on that work. So, you know, how whoever he picks or chooses... It has to be at that caliber for him to do that. And that may not be the same number that if one of us was going to do something and you solicit that. How long ago was it that Carpenter came in? Well, they were in. Oh, they were on Zillow. Oh, Carpenter was here two months ago? Yeah, they could have been oh. then, but oh. I mean, we had them in three, four years ago. Oh, that's ago. right, yeah. That's so, I right. mean, it, they have a history of. That's right. That's right. But I, I don't know what that truly means. I got the whole history. All the people they talked to, all the things they did. Yeah, that's that's good. So just just to share this on, and, and I know you know it's getting late, and but so just so you know, I do know that a lot of people listen to the tapes. Just to outline what we're talking about, if if you'll allow me. So if MMA den denied the insurance on the building, okay. They will likely not ever reinstate their insurance until it has been signed off by a structural engineer. Okay, so next point. If the town or the group of citizens in support of saving the building wishes to actually use the building, there's a sequence. And the sequence is this. Okay, first, the town should solicit bids from engineering, and this is what I'm, 
uh, engineering firms to bring the building, in, building into safety codes and repair all structural damage as well as upgrade the ADA, um, American Disabilities Act. Um, once an engineering firm is selected, the engineer designs the project and puts it out to bid. So that's what we're talking about. Um, once a builder is chosen, the engineering firm will oversee the repairs as, as it is their engineering stamp and their reputation at risk if the building falls in. Once the work is completed, the engineering firm will issue an occupancy permit or will file the appropriate paperwork with the town and the state. Then and only then will MNA have an appetite to insure that building. So that's, I just wanted everyone to understand that's what we're talking about right now. We need to start at the very beginning and either, so do we get, you know, because I, I, I heard a lot of people saying, oh, you're going to use this firm, you're going to use that firm. No, we're, we're just trying to do a job. So um, do we get bids from the engineering firms? I mean, I know it's going to prolong it longer, um, but the... You say that, but at the end of the day, how long is it really going to... I mean, just getting them. Yeah, right. What are you talking? Five, eight engineering firms in the area, top to bottom, that you can call. Well, and again, it, it, you know, maybe we'll get three who want to bid on. Yeah, and that's, you what, know, but that's yeah. what I'm trying yeah. to say. Yeah. Right. If you pick up the phone and you call, right. And, and I don't even. I mean, he threw out a name. You know, a couple. Um, if you called some of these, right. Yeah. And so, had them number one. Hey, this is what we need. We need a full. We need a bid for you to come in and do a full project plan. Right. Structural, you know, the whole thing. Now, unfortunately, when they come in, they open up walls and everything else. Because well, but at the start of the point, though, all we're asking for is the dollar amount of, you of, want the, the, you want of the, the bid project. Yeah. Correct. So yeah. To bid on doing the, right. this work. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I kind of feel bad it wasn't on the agenda because I know people want to be a part of this. But at the end of the day, all we're talking about right now is just... An engineering firm. There's no right, no right. decisions, no no nothing going on. No, no. Um, but I think, in light of the budget, right. we really ought to move forward on this faster. At least go to this level if that's the direction all three of us think we should be doing. Right, because we want to continue to march toward a special town meeting. Well, we're going to have to. Because right, we right. Have a budget shortfall. I know. Yep. Yeah, right. So. Um, Jeff, you're too quiet. Taking it all in. Well, so I understand we have to have an engineering plan for the entire project. I get that. And what we're talking about is bidding that engineering process out so that when we go to the town with it, the people on it. You just picked the highest priced engineer you could find. To, yeah, yeah. That, 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 that's in that's that. Exactly. That, is, that is what I'm interpreting. Well, that's what you're saying. that, but also I just, I, I, and maybe I was just reading it, there was a group in the back that just kept on saying, yeah, you're going to choose who you want to choose. Maybe, I, and maybe I didn't interpret, I just interpreted that there was some sort of a family situation, like, oh, I'm going to pick them because, you know, my, whatever. But, Ah, uh, now I understand. They were saying we we're going to pick the highest. I didn't even, I mean, that wouldn't even cross my mind to right. pick the highest because I want to save that building. And I want you to know that. I want to save it. And I want it to be restored from top to bottom. Um, so we're going to do it right. I agree with you. I just don't know if I want to spend town funds. No, I that's agree. The, that's no, my total No, no, game. I don't want to spend any but town I, funds. We need to, but None. It, it doesn't matter what direction we go into. It doesn't matter if we spend town funds or if we try to have something for a nonprofit take that building over. You're not going to go in either direction if somebody doesn't know what they're up against. That's right. That's, that's right. exactly right. And that is right. You need to have this full plan done so that, you know, it, it's great for my opinion to be no town funds to do this. Right. It's the townspeople that's got to make that decision. It's not us. Right. And they can't make that decision until we get them there. That's right. So that's right. I yep. think the only way in, again, I heard this back and forth in the back about who you're hiring. Um, I've been going with the same thought process as you. If you continue to use the same one, you've got to be saving money somewhere here. Um, yeah, they've, they've but done so I am much very much. open. Right. If we reach out to five, six, whoever, 
and just ask, number one, this is the project. Are you interested in giving us a price for what it would cost to come in, do a full evaluation, and we want all the way to an end project bid package? What would that number be? And then that could come back to us. We could put it on the as an agenda item. Right. Once we have that information, because I'm sure members of that committee would want to be here to listen yep. to whatever that report or whatever they're going to say is going to be. And then we could move that forward that way. But yep. um, I just think we got to move it faster than... Yep, we got I mean, I know the group wants it to move faster, but I mean, we have a budget sh shortfall, so I think that's going to be the slower part of getting this part fixed. So right. We just got to use the two together and get us there. Yep. I think that's a good game plan. Does that sound... Sounds reasonable. Mm -hmm. Does it make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I, I have no idea who to call. So, I mean, you know a couple. Yeah, I've talked to carpenters. I know what that number is. The air goes is too big for them to do. And they passed on. There's not many people who do that type of work. So what I, I, it would be nice if you, if you could do this via email. So even the proposal of what you want under this case, if we send the email, so then you get a response back that says that the air goes not interested. And same so way, keeping us in the loop. Well, and keeping the whole public in the loop. We've got so that way that everybody knows right. not only what you've done, but who's either interested or not interested. And um, uh, yeah, and Jeff, when you say you already know that number, the thing is, is it straight through to bid packages? To, to both, well, yeah. bid, yes, all, all the way through to the work is finished. Okay, got it. To see the project. Totally yep. Through. Okay. Yep. There you go. Because that's what we're going to do. Right, but that's the engineering cost that we still right. get. We need oh, to have him do that. That would be bidding. the blueprints. They, they, they've already sent it out to bid. That's what we're really going to know the real numbers. Absolutely, that's say. the thing. That's it. that's it. You know, it's easy for someone to come and say, you know, all oh, about this. But they don't know when they open a wall that, you know, that it's all rotten or, or whatever. Whatever. Whatever it is. So that's the honest way to do it. Um, uh, so... Okay, so does that work for you with regard to emailing, keeping us? Now, did you get did you get my email to include Jeff on did, with his email information? I have. I was going to ask him tonight. Have you decided on a different email? We're going to do a different email. I don't think she's got through it. Okay, but we so, can we can do it with the one I have. To <coughs> now. Okay, because I've got the paperwork to <coughs> file for MMA. But I'm not oh, going good. to do that until tomorrow morning. Okay. But I knew he was considering a different email. Yeah. So, it, yeah. I don't want to send that in, but yes, I did get his we email. We had that conversation. Yep. Okay, good. Good, good. Um, but keeping us all CC'd in, right? So, are you going to actually. I don't care if he keeps us CC'd in. He can go ahead and do his thing and he just brings it back to us. When okay, remembers. okay, that's probably better. You know that's what I better. Mean? Yeah. That's okay, so, you're not going to put an ad out in the paper to. I wouldn't. I would just reach just out to. Reach out to the, the I mean, you're not yep. talking. Yeah, yeah. No, I don't think you need to put an ad because it's not as though we don't know there. what the uh, what, who's out there as far as engine firms. firms. I okay. mean, I'll call, I'll call and find out who's reputable that does that type of work. Correct. I mean, he might know some people already. You know, looks you like that. Does Brian's group, do they have engineers? Is that something even for a local number? Uh, maybe. I, don't, I honestly don't know. I mean, Perry, would that be anything in their wheelhouse either? Or no? Perry, do they have engineers on site? Probably not that type of thing. Okay. No, and that's why I'm just asking, because I don't know. That's, I mean, some of these bigger players, as far as doing things, a lot of them are starting to have their own project management team and engineers and things, so... But, that sounds, that sounds like a plan. It just would be nice to have a different layer or, or you know, yep. however you want to word it. Right. Okay, so, um, okay, so I think that's some good uh, motion forward on the building as well. Yes? Um, do we need to um, codify that, the changes? No, I mean, you can, you can run down through it, but I think it's pretty clear. I mean, if it's in that budget and this isn't 100% necessary and we have to have it, we're not buying it, you're not spending it. And, and there's some unknowns in there that we don't even know about yet. Correct. That's the other side of it. We don't have everything back in the auditor yet. You don't right. have 
you know, there's a lot of numbers that we're still not sure for. So that number could be more than 12. I anticipate it being more than 12. Oh boy. You didn't get the assessors back yet. Yeah. Um, when, when, what's the time frame or what the assessors do we know? The assessors or the or, auditors? Uh, the auditors. Oh, well. um, <laughs> auditors. Okay, so um, I knew that he's going to be working with Ron, the owner, up in the northern part of Maine this week. So I have some questions for them. I was going to email Ashley, who's the supervisor of our auditing group, um, and ask her where do we stand, but I also have a couple other questions. Okay. Um, as far as like the 440, if we bring that out of the bank and into the books, you know, help me set that up so that I have it the right way to right. be set up. Right. And um, the or the 40,000. 40, you know, right. It's going to be presented in our in our books correctly. Right, so, right, right. Um, and just double check and see when are we going to have a draft. I would expect a draft by the beginning of next week. Okay. <laughs> That's what I'm expecting. What they do is another thing. He did say that the general fund needs to have some work because there were many different um, journal entries that were not done. So our books don't reflect what's really there. <laughs> okay. They said the general ledger had some problems. So, and Jeff and I have both talked and talked with the auditors last Wednesday. They're going to come <clears> in because of the check-in account. They're going to come in and they're going to get me caught up to date so that I know everything is good and I stack fresh. Okay. And move forward. So. I think we'll be good. It's just we moved money and didn't. Didn't put it into where it was supposed to be. Where was, yeah. Didn't show that trail, and so they'll help us correct that where that number needs to go, the right number, and, um, and get it fixed. Good. Okay. And um, did they do? And budget-wise, they're they're they are they budgeted in their number? They are budgeted in. They are. And we cushioned it a little bit. Yes, because we know it's going to having be them. Yeah, having them have to come yeah. um, and do the checking account, which is what we asked them to do. Um, but they were there all day. Tuesday, oh, I know. And all day Wednesday. <laughs> I know. I know. No, and, and, and we're going to stay with them at this point. At this point. Yeah. I think that's the, you know, the best idea. Um, yeah, that makes sense. They were very good with me as far as whatever questions I answered or asked. They gave me good answers, and they dumbed it down. So they weren't <laughs> talking like up here. So... So yeah, so Good. I was comfortable with them. Okay, all right. Any other items that we should discuss tonight? Um, next meeting is not May eighth. When um, it says on here May eighth, so yeah, that's so your next board meeting would be June fifth. Oh. You're gonna have three weeks between this meeting and the next one. Oh, we'll be meeting before that. Don't you think? Okay, so... Um, Don't we have something to... I mean, when is Josh coming in with all of his stuff and I would rates, set mill rates? And well, and that was another question I was going to ask you. Would you guys sit with him and go over the budget versus the mill rate? Do you plug those figures in? He usually in? comes in. And yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. he comes in, plugs everything in a trio, and then usually what happens is we play with the... I mean, you would play in Drio between what he's put in there to the overlay. With that worksheet. And give us scenarios of right. how much of an overlay, plus or minus, and what that's going to do to the to the mill rate. Okay. So, and you're, you, you've you used that worksheet. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Because there are certain things that you're like, oh, no, I know, I haven't done it in, you've done that. So, we just, that meeting, we'll doing it, yeah. the, that meeting, we'd want to meet down there so that she can. Yes, because it's a matter of yeah. plugging. Back forth, you know back I mean? forth. We, we keep. We I, keep. You don't want to put any more in that overlay than we have to, but we have to play with that number to try to get the mill rate as best we can. And yep. it's not always as easy as saying, "Oh, I'm only going to do ten. Well, maybe not. No, you know? and then it fluctuates, and then so you plug it in, and then you give us the numbers mm -hmm. and yeah. and what the mill rate will be. So we'll plan on have. So, so when we can, whenever we can do that, I can call Josh and see when he's going to have all that information dumped into our system, because we don't want to commit too early. Because if you're going to have a special town meeting, you might want to have That's those true. figures 
in before we fix the millery. Yeah. Because that could be a fly in the ointment there. Yep. Could be. Mm -hmm. So right now we've told people have asked where's my tax bill. We're like no, because honestly, July if, 1st. If I'm kind of envisioning if you're going to do a special. I mean, you're going to pull it 100% out of reserve. It, you're going to be passed when we would do commitment. You Possible. know what I mean? So, yep. if whatever we would, whatever we would do, if we have to, as far as general government, you're going to have to ask for that out of general funds. You know, I'm going to be able to have that go towards mm -hmm. taxation because your tax bills are already. That's right. Because when are the so taxes? You're not going to have a choice to do it that way. I usually use July 1st. Okay. Yeah. Just it's because it keeps your means and all that stuff in order. I mean, but we can we can mess with that. It all depends Let's on what the board would like that. to do. Is that the date we have always stuck to when those tax bills come out? Uh, July we want them out as soon as we can. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because you only allow two percent in a right. discount the month of July. Yeah. So and if you're in the middle of the month, that's not going to work for you residents. No. Everything to do with that tax bill is going to roll a long time. Yeah. If you have to do anything with a special, it's got to be yeah be out of on general. Top of it, yeah. As far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Oh God. My head. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So. We're not having a board meeting there. So really, I think you got to come back to us and right. we can do that. Right, talk okay. to Josh. And then the same thing with on Jeff's side. I mean, if if uh, if that would work quicker than sooner than later, and he's actually got some real numbers coming back, so we can talk about that. There's no sense for that to wait for three. three weeks no, either, and and the, the meeting with rolling. Matt as well. Yeah. Um, the only yeah. I mean, I'm going to be gone the 10th through the 16th. At, at the okay. Well, we'll yeah. Unfortunately, and if you have to meet without me, you meet without me. Yeah, we have to, and we could always just at least have you phone in. Yep. I could do that. Your opinion is. I could do that. And you can't vote over the phone, but you. So that's still only that's only one week in between. Yeah, I mean, because I'm leaving Friday and coming back Thursday. Even your next Wednesday meeting would be the twenty second. Okay, so if you if from this one a week later and then the twenty second would be okay. Would okay, so better. should we shoot for the twenty oh, okay. second? We'll put the twenty second. We may end up meeting prior to that because sure. I'm back back the sixteenth. So if we need to meet, yeah, we, we yeah. you know if um, and this <coughs> is going to be at, at the office. Or well, if, if we're, we're yeah, what I find we out. may have okay. to have a progressive meeting. Because there's no way we can do that overlay stuff sitting here. Because we, we've always had Brad, he would run back and forth through the office. To well, we, you put can, but the problem or is, Lorna you or, could, I mean, you could have Michelle sit there and wait for Oh, do all the different permutations. Like eight different scenarios. Of, I mean, but that is <laughs> really Yeah, sense. exactly. Yeah. Pick one. Yeah, we could do that, but. So, and I do have the spreadsheet. It's actually a working spreadsheet yeah. on my computer that Josh sent, Josh sent me. So I can plug the figures right in and you'll see the number. It Remind me, Dale, is, is the overlay the only number that we, that we tweak? Yeah. Okay. That's they give, it the state gives you a high and a low. Yeah. You can go as low as this and as high as this, yeah. but no more. Okay. I'm really more concerned with Josh's presentation and what's going to happen with our evaluation. That's my concern. Could be interesting. It and is. You might find in strange scenarios, you might find that all your values go up and no way drops. That has happened. It depends, just depends. I mean, with what we did with that straight across the board increase yep. in valuation, in theory, everybody's mill rate should go down. Um, which, I mean, we haven't spent any more money, but at the end of the day, we know the county and the school's going up. Mm -hmm. So that's going to play a part of that. But the other piece is, is what I'm worried about is with what we did as a straight across increase, is that still going to hold us in line with the state? Yeah. Or are we st I'm yeah. really worried that we're still going to be teetering on the bottom, mm -hmm. even with this increase, and we may have to do this again, which will be huge if we have to do that two in a row. Yeah. But, I mean, he was telling us he's got some towns that have been doing it. He knows of towns that have done it every year for five in a row um, to catch up. Yeah, because they, their rate's so low. Their well, value is so low. Yeah, and. Yeah. I so mean, you have to tear them up. Yeah, so all you have to like do is look at, the, look at what's around for properties and what they're selling for. Yeah. You know, and then you go back and you look at some of our tax valuations and. 
Mm, does mm. not add yeah. up. I've seen some that were, you know, 30% of what they sold for. Right. Mm. And that's just, that's the crazy mm. part of it, is all the sales are just beyond anything a normal main person working in this area can afford. Mm -hmm. You know, and so that makes it so nobody else can buy anything. Yep. Mm -hmm. ah. But we can't keep falling out of line, so we can't in home start Yeah, and then you start getting into we start the losing state, everything. Right. The yeah. state won't give you it. refunds. They won't do this and that. If you get below what seventy five percent, yeah, I think then we then then it comes to a screeching halt. Yeah. And we were right there. Well, we, yeah. well, we didn't get full. We didn't get full homesteads. Yep. Right, because I think you were like 80, yep. 79, 80 percent. So I'm, I'm really. I know. Like I said. I know. I'm concerned if what we did is enough. Well, I mean, you know, nothing. I can shoot Josh an email. Give me some idea of where we're looking. Yeah. Because I mean, the sheet he sent me it has our values on. Oh, it's done right now. Close. I would think. Yeah, because I mean, Sam goes over, they'll call, Sam goes over the, to the top tower by Jeff, and all of a sudden the mouse is going and they're doing whatever over and oh. over all day long. They do, they oh. do that. So. A magical computer system. <laughs> yeah. Correct. All right. So I'll make a call to him tomorrow morning, find out what we can do, where we stand, and report back to you. Very good. Is that it? Are we in good shape for tonight? I think so. Okay. Okay, and just just to confirm, because I know there was a lot of conversation, go ahead with the employee increase at this time. Is that what <laughs> that does not reflect that. That does right, correct? That does not reflect that. So, so let's look at that number. So, this is twelve that we're still. I I would recommend at this time we do not do it because if we do it, the audit comes in higher. You're going to be well over twelve. Hmm. And if we can't get it approved, what's going to end up happening is we're going to have to make the cut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So do you, yeah. and this is that what I'm thinking, saying. I mean, it's COLA. Wait, and right. I want if, them to hear. Sorry. I didn't, it's, mm. it's not good. No, I know. I it's mean, not. every full-time employee, you know, they expect a COLA yeah. raise. Right. Okay. Dale, uh, sorry, I stopped Dale because you guys were talking and I wanted everyone to hear. I'm just concerned that if we do the raise today and we can't get this approved at a special, the next thing, the reality is going to be we have to cut hours. So what little bit you add for the raise that I know we're supposed to do and we should do, and then if we're forced to cut hours out, right. it's a bigger loss. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's my fear. No, totally, totally understand. I mean, really, that's that's why I wanted to make sure that we were all on board and work, you know, working together, because that is such a huge cut that was done in town meeting. All right, and that is the. I mean, honestly, that is the condition of Gola, as approval of town meeting. Ah, that's okay. the other side of that that you need to think about. Okay. I mean, I, I didn't. I. I, I mean, didn't. we. It's in. A, I can't remember the exact <laughs> verbiage. You go in a personnel policy and blah blah blah. blah. <coughs> But it's always contingent about approval of the town meeting. I just really hate the thought that, you know, by doing that, it's hitting them. That's all. That, that, sorry, by it's doing that. that. What we're trying to do, it's really affecting. Our employees. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yep. Exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. Well, I think that, I think I, I really value your, your, I mean, you do this all day long, Dale. So. Well, no, I mean, it's you guys' opinion. That's, no, that's no, my I, opinion as well, but that's how I'm looking at it is, you know, do you move it forward and then you take a gamble that you're going to cut their hours out anyway? Right. Or do you keep the line as tight as you can hold it? And then on every line. Right. On every single line item, and then you know we can try to get to where we know what firm numbers are? Yep. Because right now we don't know what all these firm numbers are. Right. I mean, 
it's still a work in progress. You know, yeah. Jeff and I have been over it, tried to cut when we could. You know, you looked at it tonight. There's not a lot of wiggle room. Right. Well, and as Dale started this whole conversation, it, you know, there's no fluff built into that that budget. Not mm -hmm. any cent. So. All right. Well. So we'll just we'll keep it so that the answer is no. Okay. That does not include the raises at this point. And um, but we'll we'll hope that we can go to a special and Yeah. Yeah, I mean you cut all you can cut, there isn't anything left, go to the special, we can't get the funds, and the next thing is is reduce staff, reduce hours. Eat up the contingency. Yep. Then you're just playing with fire. That you, the problem, with the, and this is my problem. I agree with what you're saying, Jeff. My problem is going into a budget cycle already <laughs> knowing you're burning contingency mm -hmm. because you don't know what's going to happen in six months. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, even the fire department, you guys got a budget. Something happens to one of them trucks and you need to spend $5,000 tomorrow. You're going to spend $5,000 tomorrow. But that five thousand dollars has got to come out of our contingency. I mean, that's the other where mm -hmm. you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. That's not just it gets used everywhere. I mean, right. the only time, honestly, the only time that we've used contingency is for the fire department. Right. So that's where going into it, knowing you're chewing it, that's where it's dangerous, in my mind. Yep. Because fifteen thousand dollars isn't a whole lot of money. Twelve thousand turns into fifteen really quick. Very quick. Yep. And then there's nothing left for contingency. Yeah. Okay. And that means when you run out of money, you just close the door. Because there's nothing left. It doesn't matter what the problem is. Okay. I'll make a motion to... Is everybody... None other, no other concerns that we need to discuss? Have we taken care of everything? I believe you have. Okay, so our next meeting will be May 22nd, unless, of course, we can convene, you know, if there's a reason to gather prior to that, then we'll, as soon as I come back on the 16th, I'll be in touch, but I'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Third. Okay. All in favor. Okay. Yep. <laughs> to work.